What's the deal, y'all? It's your boy Big Star. Once again, it's showtime. Raw Sports Off the Court Live. Legends Week. We had Mo Howard. Last night we had Rashid Brooklyn Tonight we got the general Marcus Green. One of the one of the, I, I'm not even gonna go into trying to read his resume or nothing like that. It's not gonna do it any justice. All right. Tomorrow we got my man Jared Kears, Simon Gratz legend. Um, next week, it, it's just it's just crazy, man. So Thank you for tuning in to Legends Week once again. Um, if you guys have been enjoying Legends Week, um, you know, uh, just, you know, I don't know, man. Speechless, man. Just, you know, let, throughout, throughout the broadcast, let me know. Uh, um, just, you know, give me some feedback, man. Let me know how you guys have been enjoying Legends Week. Tonight is definitely going to be another treat. Uh, here we go. My man's here. Little bro. What's good? Can you see me? Yo, you sideways, man. <laughs> All right, my bad, my bad. <laughs> come on, come on, man. Come on, man. Get the technology together, Fizz. Let's go. Hold on, man. hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> what you, I, I bet you had your set up. I bet you had it all set up perfect. Huh? Nah, I didn't. I was watching somebody else, John. Can you hear me, hey, though? Do me a favor. You see that light right in the back of your head? Yeah. Like, if you could not, like, Get to a get to a place where that light is not right in back of you because it's making your face all dark. It's cool. Like if could you possibly sit somewhere else and like maybe have the light in your face opposed to in back of you? What about right here? There we go. That's better. Much better. All right. All right. That, is that comfortable for you? Not really, but it'd be all right though. <laughs> nah. It's all right though. Nah, you gotta be comfortable, man, because we're gonna be here for a while. All right. Let me get um. Yeah. If if, if you need to find another spot. Just, just, just make sure you get to a spot where you got good lighting. In your face. Just that, that light just couldn't be in back of you because it was making you all dark. That's all. And turn it. Hold on, wait, wait. We may figure something out. Hold on. No, take your time, man. Take your time. We, I'm on your time, man. Let's go. Let's go. Now, what go if I put it back right like here. this? There we go. That's much better. There, right. there we go. That's that. I don't even want, know why I didn't think about that. Just turn the light off. All right, we, we here. We good? Can you hear me? I can hear you. No doubt. So um, without further ado, man, we're just going to get right into it. I don't want to waste no time tearing and just kind of giving any introductions, nothing like okay. that. We're just going to get right into it and just let the people follow along and figure out who you are as we go. Cool? Cool. All right. So 10 random questions real quick. First question. You already know the routine. You already know the format. Um, summertime cookout. What's on your plate? Oh, oh, oh one, one other thing. Th you got to know, this interview is probably going to be the most difficult for me because I got to sit here and try to act like, we aren't God brothers. We aren't brothers. And you don't know these. And you don't know the answers already. Exactly. So it's <laughs> going to be really difficult to just ask the questions as if I don't know some of the answers. But trust me, I'm sure. Regardless, I know some of the tons of tons of this information is going to be new to me, and just you know, um, you know it's just going to be it's going to be a blessing, man. So, okay. So here we go. So uh, summertime cookout. What's on your plate? My mom's seafood salad. Um, everybody knows me. though I don't eat a lot. <laughs> probably, probably some barbecue chicken and some devil eggs. No doubt. So, you, so your plate's pretty skimpy, kind of with the same thing a lot. I'm only really eating because I gotta eat. No doubt. You know, so <laughs> I'm, I'm just enjoying the atmosphere, having a drink, of course, no and, I'm, I'm, and I'm, and I'm chilling. No doubt. Um, like when I used to have my cookouts, I barely ate at my cookouts. <laughs> just host, just hosting everybody, ripping and running. <laughs> um, <laughs> favorite cartoon growing up. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No doubt. Um, uh, oh, if, if you had, like, of all the places when you play professional basketball overseas, of all the countries you've been to, if you had to make one of those countries your home, which one would it have been and why? <sighs> Italy in the summer. Um, Istanbul, Istanbul the rest of the year. No, no. Why, why Istanbul? Best city in the world. Wow. Best city in the world. Got everything you need there. Nightlife, food, culture, art is great. It's cheap. It's not expensive. People are great. Um, no, but no. it's fast, though, too. So that's why I said Italy in the summertime with the beaches. No doubt. And, 
And where did, what, what side of the road do they drive on? This is not a question, just curious. No, 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 everybody, they drive on the regular side. Oh, it's normal? It's just um, England and Australia. Any countries that um, Australia and England, that's the ones who drive on the other side. Gotcha, gotcha. That was cool. Um, what's the food that you absolutely hate? You will never eat it ever. Ever? Yes. Um, probably some liver. Liver? Yeah, I used to have to eat that when I was growing up. I hate it. No never, doubt. never will eat that. No doubt. All right. So, so okay. Take your mind back to like when you graduated in two thousand. High school or yes. college? High school. High school, 2000. All right. So go back to like 98, 99, 2000, those years, right? Your okay. high school years. Mm -hmm. if, if, if it was around 98, 99, 2000, and somebody called you and said, yo, I, yo, Mark, I need you to um, bring, bring, bring five players up to New York for this tournament. It's going to be the best. The best high, listen, the, it's going to be the best high school players from New York. Just, just around that time, around, around your high school years, including yourself. Who would you have taken up there? And you can't, you not not your not not none of your Narsound teammates. All right, yeah, you made it harder. All right, yeah. um, I'm gonna go with Eddie Griffin, of course. Uh huh. Um, Jermaine Robinson, because you said '98, '99. Yeah, just, 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 just within that couple years. Okay, J Jermaine Robinson at the two. Um, Eddie Griffin. And then two more. You're killing me. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with Ben Slater. I'm going to have him and Ed as my bigs. Uh-huh. And the three-man, I'm going to go Tootie. Tootie. John no Allen. Doubt. Sorry. No doubt. That's a, young boy Dior just saying John Allen right on the screen. Oh, okay, okay. All right. <laughs> That's a great – that would have been a great team, dog. Great team. Um, In high school, what's, uh, was there – like, in high school, when you were in high school – whether it was a player during your years or a couple years older or whatever, was there any players that you kind of looked up to? Not not pattern your game after, but just yeah, some I looked up, man. I looked I looked up to every everybody, man. I used to, if you want to go high school level, I was a big big Marbury fan, uh -huh. super big Marbury and Iverson fan, no doubt. Because they came in the league my freshman year of high school, so okay. I like really looked up to them. Mm -hmm. Terrell Brandon was a big, uh, real good player. A lot of guys probably don't know him. Um, Jason Kidd. But as far as college, I really like Travis Best. Got a chance yeah. to play against him, too. Um, Terrell McIntyre. Like, mostly, like, the small guards, Tyson Willer, even yeah. though they all lefties. Yep. And, you know, even the high school, like, the, the Lynn Greers, you know, always looked up to them and everything. Like, yeah, I, I, I was a basketball historian, man. I knew everybody. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Um, most points you ever scored in, scored in the game, ever, like, whether it's high school, little league, ever. Um, pro, whatever. 43 against Niagara, um, and we lost, too. Mm. Played against Dave Brooks from Abington. Mm. And, so, so, uh, and Tramel, uh, Tramel Darden played overseas and everything. I was pissed. Still mad about that <laughs> game, man. So so did, did the 43 mean as much or did it just no. because y'all lost? Because no. you hate to lose. I know you. You're super competitive. You man, I remember, I remember after the game, I was cursing out teammates after the game, man. I was pissed. <laughs> pissed. <laughs> <laughs> um, besides St. Bonaventure, when you was in high school, what other schools was, was recruiting you? And we'll talk more about this later, but I'm just, I just I never knew. Um, Villanova was recruiting me. They was recruiting me hard. I made, I made it really, very known that I didn't want to stay home. Um, LaSalle was talking to me. Um, Rutgers. Um, Hostriff with Jay Wright. Um, and UNC Greensboro. So I did an unofficial visit to Hostriff, Rutgers, and Villanova. Um, Steve Lapis was at Villanova. He just literally said, hey, just just come. Let me just talk to you. He already knew I didn't want to stay home. He said, just talk to me. <laughs> yeah. And he almost had me about to sign right then and there. Just Where? Like, Steve that. Lapis of Villanova? Yeah. <laughs> wow. And, and who, 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 would, who would have, like, any of them, just imagine if you would have chosen Villanova. Who would have been there then? I'm sure, I can't remember. <sighs> Brooke Sells was there. Um, I forget the, uh, the guard name. I forget his name. Um, the two guard. Um, Mike, Mike Bray, something like that. I can't remember. He's a big man. I can't remember. Yeah. But, you, but you could have been a wildcat if you if you wanted to. Yeah, but I listen. You gotta be honest with yourself. I knew I wasn't mature enough to stay home and everything yeah. like that. <laughs> I was like, man, I gotta get up out of here. Hostage. Especially the especially the life we was living. Yeah, man. I I had to get up out of here. Yeah, we would have been all up on that campus. That's what I'm saying, and I knew that. <laughs> I knew that. 
<laughs> and oh, so um, Hostrif was cool with Jay Wright, but Jay Wright was super cool, man. He told me straight up that most likely he would leave um, and take another job. And if I would have went there, he would have left after my freshman year. So okay. that was cool. You can see Greensboro with Fran McCaffrey, who's at Iowa. He was super cool. That that was by far my best visit. Mm -hmm. um, Cause it was in you want to see um, it was in Greensboro, I want to say North Carolina. Uh -huh. um, the guys, they took me to a and T party one night and a Bennett party, University of Bennett. It's like I can't, I can't go here. It's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wrap. Yo, so that's very. We'll talk more about that, you know, later okay. on. But that's really, I, I just like because I know you were focused. You was all about your business. You know, we we did what we did. We had fun. But that part of your life was focused and and mature. So I know you you were like making. You know those conscious, mature decisions. Yeah, you got, you got to, you got to know yourself, man. You, you really yeah. got to be honest with yourself. Yeah, like I already know that you chose the school you chose for the right reasons. All right, I, what, oh yeah, for sure. When I, when I got there, when I got there, I knew that was the school I need to be at. Yeah. Um, curious. Last two questions. Um, do you know any other languages, whether fluent or just like nothing right, so you try? My French is conversational, and my Italian is conversational. I learned that word with the resume. You put that as conversation, not really fluent. I can't do an interview, but I can get by. <laughs> All right, um, so, so French, let's, let's, let's conversate. Let's get by real quick. French, <sighs> Don't say do something that. to me. No, listen, let me tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> so when I let, so after my freshman year at St. Bonaventure, we took a European trip. Yes. Right? And we went to France, um, Belgium, and London. And when I was there, I was on the subway. It was a beautiful French girl there, right? And I couldn't talk to her because <laughs> I ain't no French. Oh, man. I was like, that's never going to happen again. I took two years of French in St. Bonaventure because of that. Then I played the first two years of France overseas. But now, man, I haven't used it. I, I basically lost it, man. I really yeah, have to like, really any, pay just, attention. Just say one thing. So, you know more than me because I don't know any. Mm -hmm. say, say one thing in French or uh, Je m'appelle Marcus. That's, my name what? is Marcus. There we uh, go. Va bien. No. How was that? Tu va bien. How are you doing? No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> last question. Um, I know you've been playing. Uh, paying. You were paying attention to the Last Dance series. Uh, one thing that was interesting about the series. Um, just something that you learned that kind of stuck out to you that you didn't know before. Um, honestly, I didn't know Steve Kerr hit Michael Jordan first. I didn't know that. I I heard that story. I always thought Mike just hit him. I didn't know Steve Kerr had that heart to hit him. Hit him first. No doubt. But, um, the I mean the other. The main the main things that I've I've been seeing is like Mike's I don't know if you guys remember, like when he was practicing and you could just see his eyes, he was just all the way focused, even on the sideline, making sure he did this to like a couple guys, like, yo, stay focused right now. Even in the practice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like every bit counts or whatever. So just his determination and everything like that and his his leadership. He didn't mind being a bad person, you know. No doubt. There's nothing wrong with that at all. No doubt. All right, well, man, um, just like I said, I, like I said to uh, my man, um, uh, OG, Mo Howard, and with Rashid Brooklynboro, man, I respect you guys so much. Um, and I, I don't want to, um, of course, I have questions, yes, mm -hmm. um, in case, you know, whenever you need me to insert them. But I respect you guys so much, and I just appreciate and value everything that you guys have to say that I, I just want to give you the freedom just to talk. So if, if you want to, you, you, you can just talk and just, just, just. I, where you, I'll where you want to, where you want to start at? Well, we can just simply start at um, just you introducing yourself and just where, 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 where the Marcus Green story began, man. We can just start uh, there. You, you, you just talk, and I'll, and I'll interject when I need to. Okay, well, you know, grew up in West Philly. Um, one older brother, two older sisters and everything. Tight-knit family. In 95, my dad, he was working in Allentown. So he was, think about that. P people who don't know the area. He was driving from West Philly to Allentown every day to work. So that's about yeah, good hour. Pause, pause one second. One thing I don't, you, you know that, you know that story, that, that thing that you laid on me a couple of years ago, that, that thing? Yeah. All right. Don't, don't, don't talk about that yet. I, Cause I want you to tell that story about what could have been and all that. Like, just, just, yeah. just hold, just, don't, don't say that. I'll let you know when we're going to reveal that, but go ahead. Okay. But anyway, we moved, moved to, um, to Norristown, um, 95. I remember it was Christmas break, 1995. And at the time I just, you, you, you're young. You don't. I just thought we was moving to the middle of nowhere. You know what I mean? Not taking into account my mom is still working at 56 in Market. Well, 56 in Chestnut. She's still going back to work. We still going to church at Christian Stronghold. It wasn't the end of the world, but I thought I would never see my friends again. <laughs> I thought life was over as you know it. Yeah. You know? And what, but, what grade was that? What grade was that when you y'all moved to Narsound? 
I was in seventh grade. Okay. It's in seventh grade. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mind the effect as, you know, as far as meeting new kids and stuff. I didn't really care about that part. Um, I really felt for my brother and sister because they moved outside. They moved in high school, like a sophomore, junior in high school. Like that's tough to do that in a sense. But we moved, you know, I was playing in Sunny Hill League at that time and everything like that, you know. So I was playing basketball. I was playing football mainly, you know, that was that was probably my main sport, football. Okay. And everything and everything like that. So and then we just, we came up here and it was by far the best decision, you know. I wouldn't have been who I who I was. Oh sorry, my sister said Bethlehem PA, not Allentown. They okay. basically like right no, next to each other. the same kind of in the same Yeah, world. they basically yeah. Yeah. So that helped me. I mean, I met lifelong friends, brothers. Um, I went, probably wouldn't have had the ba- probably wouldn't have had the basketball career I had now if I would have stayed there. Um, if you would have stayed yeah. like in the Philly area, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think I would have, I don't think I would have at all. And why is that? One, because I had a, a great coach in Binky Johnson. That was like one of the main things. A high school coach, he helped me big time, and I just probably just needed a change of environment you know, and everything like, not that I was getting in trouble or anything like that, mm-hmm. you know, but, <clears throat> excuse me, but it was probably just needed. And I started as a freshman at high school. I don't think that would have happened in the public league, you know, to mm-hmm. be honest with you. Gotcha. So, um, and, you know, going through high school, it was, it was, it was good. I didn't, I wish I could go back and enjoy it more. <laughs> you know, I enjoyed it, but, you know, I'm one of them people that kind of forget things and everything like that and just, rush right through it and then when I look back like man that was a good time but I don't even remember a lot of the stuff yeah unless people bring it up and everything like yeah. that so it, you know it was it was just it was just a good time um like you said I was always really focused um the focus came from I'll tell you a little story about that I was in elementary school um people in West Philly know hadn't since playgrounds a, like an adult league and my dad and oh I, th- I think somebody uh somebody had said Hattie somebody somebody yeah, somebody, Hattie. Somebody comment Hattie, yeah. Yep. So it was an adult league, right? And I remember this like it was yesterday. And, you know, guys, you know, summer league, guys talking trash, whatever. And somebody was like, guy was playing on the court, and they was he was killing. I don't remember who it was. Don't, that, that's not important. But I remember guys on the sideline like, man, he could have made it if he was just focused. If He, he could have easily made it if he was just focused. And then he even said it, it was like, laughing, joking, like, Psh, I could have made it. I just wasn't focused. And it just clicked in my head. I'm like, I heard of people not making it because of drugs mm-hmm. and alcohol or yeah. getting injured. But focus? <laughs> I was like, that's never going to be me. I was like, I'm going to always be focused. No, no matter what this, like, and, you know, looking back on it, sometimes I may have taken, taken it overboard where I'm like extremely focused and it's like, all right, you, sh- you can live a little bit and enjoy yeah. it or whatever yeah. like that. So, um, but that just stuck with me. Like, bro, don't ever not be focused. Uh-huh. Like, always be disciplined. Always take things serious. Always work hard and everything like that. Mm-hmm. That's the least you can do. No doubt. Life. You know what <laughs> I mean? No so, doubt. So that was, I mean, I kind of like just kept that. Um, I had real bad headaches in middle school. Mm. Like a lot of people, I mean, my parents knew about it. Cause I was just like, man, just stay focused. You gotta always be focused, like always, yeah. always, always be focused, and everything like that. Yeah. A lot of people don't know I had high blood pressure. <laughs> That's my son. He can't sit still. <laughs> <laughs> I had high blood pressure uh, my sophomore year, mm. and I couldn't, I couldn't practice in the beginning of the season. Mm. Cause I put so much pressure on myself and everything like that. You know, like coming back as a starter and everything like that. It was. You know, you was just like all in your mind too much. Like, yeah, it was. It it, it was nobody else. It was just all me, because Mm -hmm. my freshman year I started, and again, this is me creating issues. I do that a lot. In my mind, I'm like, all right, you got away with your freshman year. Ain't nobody know you. Sophomore year, everybody know you. You got these seniors that's looking forward to having a great year. This all on you. You the point guard. You got to make sure this happened. This nobody said that to me. Nobody even mentioned it. (laughs) This is just all me in my head. What they say, creating problems. Yes, <laughs> creating creating problems yourself. <laughs> Whatever. So, you know, so I couldn't, I couldn't play. I didn't miss any games, but I couldn't practice for like the first few weeks. And they were like, "Yo, if you don't get your blood pressure down, you're not playing." Wow. And yo, I, why, why did I didn't? I don't. 
I'm not sure if I knew that, man. Or e either knew, or did, just didn't remember, or didn't know. I have no idea. I don't. Yeah. I, don't, I, can't I, lot, I mean, a lot of people didn't. I don't know what they told the team. I knew uh, the head coach knew. My parents knew. And they were just like, what are you struggling? I'm like, man, this is a big year. Like, you know what I mean? This is a big year. This is it. Yeah. In my mind, I'm thinking my sophomore year is it. Like, if I don't have a good sophomore year, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. It's craziness. You know, that's all. So, you know, just kind of grinding through that and everything like that. Um, and I wasn't really confident in my game, you know? Like, that's, that's really the main, the main part. Because um, I couldn't shoot. You know, a lot of people who just know me now, they see my shooting. But, man, people who knew me back in middle school and ninth, tenth grade, no, I couldn't shoot. Like, it was frustrating. You know what I mean? Like, people backing up off you and everything like that. Like, Eric Snow and Rondo, whatever. Like, it was tough. And it's not like I'm going jump over nobody, uh -huh. you know, and everything like that. So, it was just it was just all that. But it got me to work harder, too, at the same time. Yeah, so how did, how did you wind up ultimately getting by – like with your shooting, and we we can be honest, your form was jacked up. <laughs> My form, listen, star. Your the form videos, was the, vid the video, up. listen, the videos that you've been putting up. I'm cringing watching the videos. <laughs> I was watching with my dad. I was like, Dad, you see my form? He was like, Man, your form was terrible. I was like, Man, I wouldn't recruit me if I was a college coach. <laughs> like, man, that was terrible. Like, how did those shots even go in? <laughs> I mean, oh, but you, you was hitting deep shots. I remember that Coastville game was in John Allen. Well, I mean, my, that's the thing. My, bombs. Senior, my like, senior year, my senior year was much better. Mm -hmm. But up until that point, it was horrendous. <laughs> horrendous, man. So I got, I got by because I was fast. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like, I was just quick. You know what I mean? And, and I, had ang I had the angle game down. Yeah. But I always say, man, I, tell, I was telling some young boys today this. If I guarded me, oh, I would kill. I would. I would, I would <laughs> like, like, nah. You're not. You're not getting past me. You're not nothing. Or whatever. <laughs> That's so. funny. Hey, go, let's go back. Let's go back a little bit. Um, you mentioned mm -hmm. football. I did not know that. Um, I think it was a couple weeks ago. Uh, when I was um, I, I put up a picture about you know picture of you and somebody. Um, I didn't know who they were. They they chimed in. They were like, yeah. Um. You know, he was a beast at football, too. And we're family. I did not know that you played football, man. And you said yeah. that that was your main sport, too. Tell yeah, me Yeah, because that. um, where I grew up in West Philly, everybody wasn't playing. Like, my, my guys, my boys, they wasn't basketball players. Mm -hmm. I would drag them to the basketball court. But they wasn't really basketball players. They were football players. You know, gotcha. like everybody everybody could play football, especially yeah. big dudes, physical and everything like that. So football just came actually natural. I'm small. I'm quick. It just makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um. So I, I play, yeah, I play uh, football, and I and I credit football for my physical my physicalness. And my sister said I did gymnastics. Wow. Yeah, my kids always trying to get me to flip. I'm getting too old now. <laughs> I can't do that. So the, yeah, the gymnastics that was that was crazy because yeah, I, I was one of them kids to see a car and just flip off a car. Wow. Just anything. And then my parents were like, yo, I didn't you, know this, man. yeah, they like, yo, you gotta get in, we gotta put you in gymnastics because you're gonna break your neck. No doubt. <laughs> but football, I stopped playing football in middle school. Okay. And the reason why, you know, I just felt like I'm just not good enough to play both sports. Like, you got to focus in on one. Again, yeah. being honest with yourself. You got to be honest. Uh -huh. Like, I know, like, there's no way I'm going to be able to play football, not touch a basketball, and then come play basketball and be good. It's just. Got you. That's just not going to happen. In the event that you didn't choose basketball, just imagine you would have said, you know, well, forget it. It's just going to be football for me. Um, do you think that you, with your, with your focus and your determination, you think that you would have been able to excel at football at your size? Um, well, not, not, not to do with size. Just would you? Yeah, because you football you it actually was an advantage. Here? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But football players, man, they, it, they different. They wired different. <laughs> I don't really think I'm wired that much different. You know what I mean? Like, I, like I'm not going head first. At some yeah. point, I would have been clicked. Like, bro, do you really want to go head first into this offensive line, defensive line? Like, safe, nah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, basketball it is. <laughs> no doubt. So when you say, okay, so basketball it is. What in your mind? Shit. Well, you talked about like you know, have having to stay away from one and do the other. But when did you fall in love with basketball and say, you know what, this is my thing? And then when did you realize that you were you were you were good? Um, well, I always fell in love. Well, I was I was always in love with basketball. Uh -huh. Always in love with basketball and everything like that. Um, but as far as being good, I want to say, man, I, it was sixth grade. I was playing the Sunny Hill League, and my dad used to always play me up. 
like I was playing against eighth graders and everything uh -huh. like that, um, West Philly. And I just, it was like a stretch where I just played really, really well, playing older and everything like that, playing against older kids. And I, you know, I just, I just really knew that speed really, really does kill. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like people really can't stay in front of you. And back then, everybody, I don't, people remember in them 90s, everybody pressured the ball full court, mm -hmm. everybody. And that's my advantage. Uh huh. You know, that's my advantage. You're pressing me full court. That's my advantage to go past you. And that's uh -huh. my advantage also, you know what I mean, to press up on guys. So I realized that aspect, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, I'm good at that. Um, the jump shot, it didn't really, I ain't, it didn't really click that I really couldn't shoot that well because everybody was pressing. Like, and then, then you really couldn't shoot jump shots like that. Like, yeah. coaches wasn't letting guys just shoot jump shots. Like, uh -huh. it was like, yo, go to the hole, go to the hole. Don't be shooting them threes uh -huh. and everything <laughs> like that. So it wasn't a big deal. Um, well, high school, I want to say the Harrisburg game. I think, yeah, you posted that. Yep. That's when I felt like I belong. Like, I'm a varsity player. Even though I was already playing varsity, I felt comfortable. Like, all right, I can, I can actually play on this level. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And everything like that. And be good at this level. No doubt. I mean, that happened quick. I mean, that was fast. But right after that, you know, obviously you had bad games. Playing against the PWs and John Simons and them. That bring you right back down. <laughs> <laughs> but at that time, I was like, all right, you know. I'm all right, you know, and no everything doubt. like that. No doubt. Curious, um, you know, these days, you know, everybody has trainers and this and that. How did you develop back then? Was it just, was it just, <sighs> just hooping or did you have a trainer? You know, I had no, I told, I told Jared, you know I told mean? Jared Armstrong on this uh, earlier today. I said, man, if I had a trainer, I would have been so much better. Wow. Like so much better, man. Like, man, Northtown High, they used to kick me out of the gym. They literally used to kick me out the gym. I couldn't work out at my own high school. Mm. Like, I would sneak in. The AD would be like, you can't be in here. You can't be in here. Kick me out. Wow. Like, you just going to have to do it every day. Then they put the courts up, like some nuts. That's corny. So I didn't have no gym to work out in. It was just basically like I had to go to the park. I used to get up in the morning, 6 a.m., and just go go work out at the park. But I didn't really know what I was doing. You know, yeah. I'm just, just shooting. I ain't work. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, really. I'm a kid. Uh -huh. I'm 16, 17. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have that. So I remember Rasheed Broken Bro saying the same thing. When he got to college, you know what I mean? That's when you really, you know, learn and focus. And that's what I, I needed that. I needed that bad. Yeah. Um, so, so tell me, let, let's tell some stories, some, some memories. Anything you remember about, like, your, not, not high school. Let's, we're going to keep them separate. Um, let's talk about the playground days or, or like some leagues, any leagues you played in um, and just, you know, just any, anything you remember um, from them days, any memorable Man. games, players you played against teams, leagues. But, Man, you know, I remember, I remember, I remember um, the Sunny Hill league playing against Ash Howard. Okay. No, I got a good, I got a real good. Speaking of Haddington, this one I knew I needed to work harder. Ash used to come to West Philly um, in the summer times. He stayed in West Philly in the summer times. And, and, and put it in perspective, uh, for all any young players that don't know, he's talking about head coach of LaSalle University, oh, Ashley yeah, Howard, who uh, his dad was uh, our first legend, Coach Mo, Mo Howard. That's who he's talking about, Coach Ash. So Ash, so Ash, right, he – um, I remember this like it was yesterday. We was at Haddington and it started pouring raining. Start pouring rain. I think Ash – um, people live right across the street from Haddington. But I start walking home. I – I was like a few blocks down and I heard the basketball still in the pouring rain or whatever. And it was Ash out there working out in the rain, like working on his handle, everything like that. <laughs> and I was just looking at the corner, just watching. I'm like, Oh, I got to get better. <laughs> I was like, I got to get better. I was like, he, he on a different level than me right now. Like, like, like I'm ready. I'm ready to go home. Cause it's raining. Yeah. And he, and he just, he just getting warmed up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I remember that. Um, I just remember playing a lot of games, man. We had Positive Image League, Sunny Hill League, and the Huntington Park League. Mm -hmm. And it was it was it was just crazy, man. Like all those games, all those guys. I remember Will Chavis, man. I could like he was the first guard in my life that I could not get past. <laughs> I felt like I could I could do nothing against him. Like literally nothing. <laughs> and what 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 school was he what school did he play at again? Will Chavis played at ENS. Nah, this is middle school. This is like oh, middle school. We, we in middle. We in middle school at this point. Okay. Now maybe, maybe he, so maybe he was. He's two years older than me. So maybe he was. Maybe he was in ninth grade. But I was like in 
And I just remember playing up in Huntington Park. I'm like, yo, I can't get past this dude. Like, at all. <laughs> like, it's, it's impossible. I'm trying every move. He's quick, just like me, strong, same mm -hmm. size. Yeah. I remember that like it was yesterday. That's crazy. <laughs> like, not, not just... <laughs> That's crazy. Um, what about, uh, we'll talk, talk about Oak Street Park, man. The, the legendary man, Oak, Oak, Oak Street, Street Park. Was, yeah, Oak Street was great. Oak Street was great. That, because you're playing against grown men. Yes. You know? And that like that that's a different that's a different ball game, you know. Like they they bumping you. I'm I'm a skinny little kid, high school or whatever. They challenging you. You can't beat them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it, it it was that really helped us out a lot. Helped me out. And, and you time. won you won. Uh, did you win a championship with Moore Street down there? Yeah, Street? I won. Yeah, we won two championships. Now nah, Mo Mo Nelson just asked that I play in the program Chester. Nah, I never played there. Um, but yeah, the O Street League was good. And then when I was in high school. I played in the Drexel Pro Am League. I was the only high school kid to play in that. Wow! And it was—I had to use a um, a different name because I wasn't allowed to play in it. <laughs> no sound. <how? laughs> yeah, Jim Klimenoff got me on the team. Jim Klimenoff is a Denver Nuggets scout right now. Wow! I don't even know how I got on that team. I don't even remember <laughs> how that even happened. Yeah, that's crazy. And I know them. And and the thing is, those pros, I I like envied them. It was Sean Colson, Pooh Island, uh, Lavar Austin. Like all them dudes was there playing. Yeah, because it was a pro am. And you were playing with them? I was playing against them. Uh, that's what I'm saying, like on the court with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what grade and was I, you in? Huh? What grade was you in? I was uh I was going to my senior year of high school. What? So that's Either I was going to my senior year of high school or going to college. But anyway. And you, and you was playing in the pro am with Pooh Allen and Colson yeah. and all them guys. And listen, this the wow, thing. This the thing. And I didn't I didn't even I didn't even know Sean Colson at the time. But he pulled me right to the side and gave me so many jewels on pick and roll, how I'm supposed to protect the ball and everything. And all I remember, like, seriously, man, when I was in high school, I used to look at pros, and I just felt, and I know probably young dudes look at me now and think the same thing. I felt like they never missed. <laughs> like, I really, really felt like, I'm like, yo, these dudes never miss a shot. And I was like, man, I just, I, I just want to get there. I want to get to the gym where people are like, man, he just never going to miss. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's how I felt. Them dudes, man. It was like any open shot, it was it was a basket. Mm -hmm. Anything. And they played with so much poise. I'm ripping and running up in here, doing all this crossing over and everything like that. But they still right there in front of me. <laughs> you know what I mean? In my mind I'm going past them, but I'm really not. You know? So that I don't I don't know again, I don't know how I got on that team. I don't know who hit me up. I don't I don't remember any of that. Yeah, I just, I'm. It was it was great. I needed all that for sure. Wow. So who um during like the you know we're not we're we're, we're going to talk about high school in a second, but I just don't want to miss anything. Who were some other um players? Some of some of the uh like during your like summer leagues and you know high school leagues, wherever you know uh, summer leagues, whatever you played in. Um, some of the toughest players you went up against um during um, those times that you can remember. So when I was um so in the summer league, I remember I played against um Zach Zach Smith from FLC. And I remember this. It was Sunny Hill. Zaki Smith. Zaki Smith. Zaki Smith. Yep. Yeah. So I remember it was um it had to have been after my freshman year of high school. So you know the Sunny Hill League is like the spring of your freshman year. So this is ninety seven. I like to give years so people can realize. So mm -hmm. Zach killing the FLC. I didn't know who he was. So you know, you gotta think back then, all you all you see is newspapers. Ain't nobody on TV, there's no social yeah. media. And you didn't know what they looked like, but you heard I didn't know about what they looked the like. Paper. Yeah. And so um, I go down to Sunny Hill, and man, he demolished me, like demolished <laughs> me, like killed me, everything, gave me everything. And I remember, all I remember is this, I remember, <laughs> it was like a dream. <laughs> you know, you know, mansion, mansion come. So they had, they had on, on the sideline, all you heard was buzz, buzz, Kevin Forty, buzz Forty, yeah. just yeah. chopping everybody up. I'm like, yo, who is this? Who is this dude? So I remember that. I remember, man, the, the Sunny Hill Summer League was crazy. And was that indoor or outdoor? It was indoor. It was at McGonagall at Temple. Oh, um, yeah. I remember. I remember being down. Yeah. I remember going down there, man. And you had to be ready to play, man. I remember. Yeah. So I remember in college league, Lynn Greer and Rasul Butler, rest in peace, they was on the same team. And I just, I was just like, man, these, these dudes, man. On another level, man. And mind you, I, I got to play against them at St. Bonaventure. I'm playing against them twice. Yo, them they days, did. yo, explain to this younger generation, man, like right now, all people know is like, you know, we go, we go to the Catholic League games and, you know, summer leagues ain't really jumping like they are, like they used to be because, 
you know, it's AAU has everything taken over. Yeah. But describe Spiz. Describe what it was like. Game day, you're driving down Broad Street, you park on one of them side streets, you 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 walking <laughs> in, or we walking into McGonagall Hall, you see you see Hardnet standing there with a whole bunch of players around him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. like the atmosphere. Nah, it was it was it was it's it's hard to it's it's hard to describe it because when you was there you didn't realize how great it was. Yeah. But like it your name really it you had to prove yourself every time. Mm -hmm. Like you had to prove yourself. And it it was just it was just a lot of good competition. And Philly is a guard is a guard city. Uh -huh. This is a guard area. So every guard you can get you can get embarrassed, and I live. I got embarrassed plenty of times. Mm -hmm. Like it's plenty of dudes be like, "Yo, I killed him." Yeah, you did. You probably <laughs> did. Like it's it's a tough league. It's a tough city. You know what I mean? Like it's you had to be ready at no all doubt. times. No doubt. You know I mean? So I miss those days, man. No doubt. All right. So all right. This was this is the moment that I have been waiting for. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we, I want to I want to talk about high school basketball now, right? So we're going. We, 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 we started. You talked about North Sound. The family move into this and that. But the bomb I want you to drop on them is the bomb that you dropped on me a couple of years ago when when you tell me about what could have been. And then tell me about that conversation with your dad and just t t tell the people. I'm going to just sit back and tell the story. So, wait, what, which, which one are you talking about, though? I'm trying to think. Roman. 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 Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Roman. So, my the summer going into my senior year, I played with the Tim Thomas. Oh, oh was, that, was that was that then? Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Well, let's 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 um. All right, we'll go go. Just go, just go. So I was um I was playing with Eddie Griffin, rest in peace, uh, with him and Tootie John Allen. We played for Tim Thomas players, um, for the Nationals in Vegas. Uh huh. And so I I, I remember this like it was yesterday. Ed was like, man, you should you should transfer to Roman. You know what I mean? Everything. And Jimmy Solomon, who's the coach. Everybody know him. He was like, yo, I think it would be good for you to transfer to Roman. He was like, you know the coach. Um, rest in peace, Rod. Rod was the assistant coach. He was like, you know what I mean? Go there. And I was like, yeah, my sister's still living in West Philly. And Tootie, Tootie may not remember this. Tootie was like, man, I, I can go there too. And we both, we, I think we all kind of look like, you're not leaving Coach Philly. Like, yo, wait. <laughs> you, Tootie, and Eddie Griffin, dog, come on. Nah, he. I, I don't think Tootie would have went. He was. I, 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 he, it just, just felt good at the time. But anyway, just, just you and Eddie. Period. Like that. Oh, yeah. So, ahead, man. so it was. I remember Rod called me. Um, he called me when when we got back from Vegas and everything. He was like, "Look, man, it'd be good for you. You know, what I mean, get some good exposure. We got a national schedule we play and everything like that." Um, Mustafa Bay. He had just left. I think he had, he had left. So they kind of needed a point guard. Um, John Higgins was there. Mike Wild was there. Tamal Fortune played with us, and everything. So it was it was almost like a done deal. Like my dad, he you know my my dad is kind of different. He's not going to tell me yay or nay. It's just like hey, you know what you thinking? This is and that, and it didn't go down because my mom. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, okay, dad was all for it. In dad's mind, you're going to Roman Catholic. It's going to be no. Good. It and like Griffin, like it it. My dad. I don't even remember my dad ever saying go or don't go. It was it up was to more, you. Yeah, it was up to me. You know, he's like yo, I'm, I don't have to go there. Now the only thing my dad put his foot down. I was like yo, I'm gonna live. I'm gonna live with my sister in West Philly. He's like nah, you are gonna commute. Okay. He's gonna have to get up in the morning and commute. He's like you're not gonna live there, or whatever. So I mean, no big deal. But my uh -huh. mom was like, no, you can't leave Norristown. Everybody <laughs> loves you here. This, this, and that. And I remember my uh, my no old head. No way! <laughs> I remember my old head, Buddy Epps, was like, hey, we know how to drive down to Roman. <laughs> we'll come Simple. support you. Simple. Broad and fine. Simple. <laughs> Listen, I try so not to Mom do Duke. this. Mom I try Duke. not. I try not to do this. It all worked out, man. No it doubt. all worked out. That and, I, and I hate to, sorry, I hate to have you relive that because i know oh i i kind i kind i kind of do it every once once and so often you know what i mean it's it's not like you're bringing up something that i i haven't brought up before like an old traumatic wound <laughs> so you, you you you've done this to yourself in the past there's nothing new yeah like reliving yeah. that experience but you ever you ever watched that i don't know if you guys if you ever watched that movie butterfly effect that's like one of my I, favorite movies yeah ashton kutcher 
that's a good movie for people to watch. And it's like he goes back in time and changes one little thing, and then he sees the results of it. Yeah. And it could be something very, very simple as turning left or going right. Uh-huh. And it's a whole domino effect. Yeah. They call it the butterfly effect or whatever like yeah. that. So I don't know why. I think when I die, I'm able to, God's going to grant me that, hey, you can switch a few things just to see what it would happen <laughs> or whatever like that. Just see what it would have been like. Yeah. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm hoping that it would have turned out worse. So that's why I'm all right. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 that's why God wanted me at Norristown. Exactly. Gosh, it is God. what it is, man. But Andy. just, I mean, just, just imagining, you know, I mean, one of the things I think about was, um, it, remember, you remember the legendary down at Temple, the, the, the Roman versus Camden game against Dewan Wagner. We was there. We was there. That and I'm watching you. the whole time, like. That would have been you. That would have been you against Dewan Wagner, dog. And yo, I'm this sorry. the other, I'm this the funny, this, this the funny thing. When I'm I bring sorry. this up sometimes to my mom, yeah. she's like, oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> I still don't even remember. <laughs> Mom don't even remember. So it's just like, man, all right, oh. whatever. All good, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Hey, That's but what you know is. what? You came to Norristown and the rest was history, man. Yeah. I mean, I still would have been in Norristown. I just would have, my senior year. That's all. Yeah, true, true, true. That's all. That's funny. But it's cool. Hey, so, 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 let, so let's talk about the Norristown experience. Um, just, just basically break down. You already talked about it a little bit, but um, a few memorable games, some, some, you know, some, some good rivalry games. You know, you, Jameer Nelson. You know, you going against yeah. Coachville. Talk about those couple, couple games, couple experiences. Hey, so when, when I, so when, it wasn't, it wasn't a lot of people who start as a freshman, mm-hmm. or whatever. And so again, this is 1997, 96, 97. So you're not, you don't know everybody, everything that's going on, out there. You know. Excuse me, you don't have a raw sports playing the games. So I remember I thought I was probably the only freshman starting um, in high school. And then I think Chester, you no, know, they made it to the final four. And I remember somebody like, yeah, Chester got a nice freshman point guard, this and that. And I was like, what, huh? Is somebody else out there? <laughs> oh, <but I'm... laughs> it ain't just me. <laughs> and so I, the only way I could follow Jameer was the newspaper. Yes. That's it. Uh-huh. There's there, there's no games. Being, I mean, you got the high school sports show, but you know it's it's just you, you don't see it. You couldn't so go on we, YouTube, Instagram, nothing like do that. all that. So it was great because man, when we played against each other, it was already mutual respect. But you know, what I mean, you could tell like we both was like, hey, we the top. I'm the top dog. I'm the top dog. Whatever like that. So we played them twice. The first game, and then we played them in the states and everything like that. And we've been we've been friends ever since, man. Like just like he said, I got on his live a few. Um, weeks ago, whatever, said that I pushed him. He pushed me, too, because it was the unknown. Mm-hmm. Like, you see how now you can go on YouTube and people's page, you can see how they working out, what they doing. Yeah. I had no clue what this guy was doing. I had yeah. no clue what nobody was doing. It's, it's, it's like battle rap now, where you, you get a whole <laughs> three months to, to write your raps against this guy, do your research. Yeah. But back then, you just had, it was in the moment, and you just, you just you ain't know nothing about the guy. You just go. <laughs> yeah. So that those are some great games. Like I said, the Harrisburg game, um, 10th grade, them PW games was war, even though they beat us every time and everything <laughs> like that. And that was John um, Salmons and those guys? Yeah, John Salmons, Gene Shipley, uh, Brian mm-hmm. Collins and yep. everything, the guest, the guest brothers. Go over that way. So it's – um, yeah, those are some good games. Junior year, we were, we were, we were really good. Lost in – lost at Temple. Um, the Pensbury and everything like that. But I remember these, that. Tor- Torian Jones, right? Torian Jones, man. That's my guy right now. He's at Delaware uh, coaching right now. Word. Yeah. That's what's up, man. So, I wish I wish I wish that little bro, I wish Reese was on here. My, with my <laughs> bad. My <laughs> Yo, but I, I was oh, I, I think that's um I was at Westchester then and I had that's when I had my first but uh, Keisha was Keisha, me and Keisha was at that game. I brought my first video camera and I think I filmed that game, but I have no idea where it's at. Yeah, throw that in the trash. We don't need, we don't need none of that. We don't need none of that. So the yeah, the we had the hat roll games, man, against Matt Carroll, Matt and Pat yes. Carroll, man. Matt that Pat, was yep. man, that that was some that was some battles right there. Action News was at that game. I remember that. I remember we came to the game. The JV game was like packed, almost sold out. Was, was that a, was that a mutual? Like, no, nah, that mutual? was a home game. That was a home game. So you got the game. Carroll. The game you got was the playoffs. Okay, that's the game you got. And well, so you, that's you what I was going to say. Game. It's a lot of game star I don't remember. Yeah. In high school. 
like I, re- I, re- I kind of remember like the wins and losses, but I don't remember yeah. the details. Yeah, like the yeah, Co- yeah. the Coatesville game, my junior year at Coatesville, we beat them by one point. Mm-hmm. That was a battle. That was a that was a battle. Tootie was a sophomore. He was killing. Mm-hmm. It was like right before Christmas. We always played them two days before Christmas, like the get uh, the game before Christmas break. Those yeah. Coastal games was battles, man. Like yeah. Spe- speaking of the Coastal games, uh, Duber, my man Dennis Holmes, Duber, mm-hmm. um, he said uh, he he brought up something. He said he remembered um, when Northtown played y'all played Coastville. Uh, uh, Jig and uh, Jig and Dupree's pop Reese Reese Bryant. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I know what you're about to say. Yeah, yeah he said, the he said uh, the, 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 something right right before the half was over, or something something like that. Uh, he said you uh, you stripped him like two seconds left. You stripped him and then just put the ball on the ground and walked away or something like something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So tell me it, about that. What happened? I don't. That was just spur of the moment type of thing. I don't. It man. That, when I tell you, man, there was so much trash talking in those games. Like the year before my sophomore year, we smacked them, but my freshman year. Man, I remember they were talking so reckless. Like, and same same with us. And um, I'm not a trash talker at all. Yeah. But that game was so much trash. It was so much trash talk. And I I love to <laughs> love Reese and love uh Shaman Tools or whatever. But we was it was it was war, man. It was it was war for real. <laughs> so was uh was like John Allen, um, 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 Jameer Nelson, were they and like the Harrisburg guys? Were they some of the toughest players you remember playing against? Like, what, what were some other like the Torian Jones you mentioned? What were some other tough yeah. guards that you played against in high school that you can that you can remember? Um, yeah, it was a it was a lot of them. Andre Henry, like you said from Harrisburg. Mm-hmm. Um, we played against Allen Ray. Was you at that game? We played East Side High. Yes, I was at East Side. I went to East Side. No, no, no. I wasn't Allen Ray. It was Randy Foy. Sorry, it was Randy Foy. Yeah, I was and there. He had, we, and we and he hit the buzzer beater. We, we took a bus. It was like a fan bus. Yeah, and he hit yeah. the buzzer beater on us. Um, yeah, I mean, it, like I said, in, in our area, man, it's, it's guard heavy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I used to struggle with the Council Rock guards. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like the real basic guards. Yeah. You know, sometimes. Like, they, they're sometimes the hardest ones to play against, mm-hmm. in a sense. Um, so, um, Ray, Ramos from Hatboro, he was nice. He was real nice little shifty guard and everything like that. So it was some battles, man. It, yeah. was, it was it was great what, to be a part um, of it. What, do you remember any of the accompl- or any of your like uh, accolades or accomplishments or like awards from high school? Can, can you recall any of them or no? Well, Ben Slater just posted something um, not too long ago that I got Suburban Player of the Year my senior year okay. and everything like that. Man, when you when you in it, you in it. You know yeah. what I mean? You, I'm not really paying attention. I, I remember uh, somebody brought up um, – when I scored my thousand point, I don't remember nothing about that game at all. <laughs> like nothing about it. All I remember is I got that thousand point and I just went over to my, you know, my parents and my sister was at the game and just gave them the ball. And that, you know, that that's all I remember. Kevin yeah, Kevin Moore. I remember it was on a Saturday. That's all I remember. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. So um, let's 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 transition. Tell me, um, tell me about about my AAU. What, what AAU teams did you play for? What's some AAU memories you had? So I played with Keystone Blazers, uh, with Thurman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that, that, you know, that was, that was great. You know, we, we went a lot of places. We didn't have a, a deep team. So I was able to just kind of like, just do my thing and everything like that. I could play my game. We used to go like six, seven deep and just used to just run. Um, but when I went to the nationals, I did go with, like I said, with Tim Thomas players with Eddie Griffin and all them. We lost in the championship to um, the new Orleans jazz. I remember that they had their backcourt was Chris Duhon and Mo Williams. Wow. And they had Justin Reed, who went to Mississippi. He was tough. Hmm. He was real tough. He ended up getting drafted by Boston. Wow. They had a tough. They had a real good team. Wow. They had a real good team. They they basically controlled the game and won and beat us yeah. in the championship. So y'all y'all um the the uh the Tim Thomas players who um hold up the players is that, that did that evolve into the players that still are still around? The yeah, players? that's yeah that's yeah that's them. Yeah, that's them. the players. Yeah, orange, yeah. Mm-hmm. And orange, and uh, yellow that's, and mm-hmm. red. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, that's because the... they they based over in New Jersey. You know? Yeah, because like I, I, don't I, know I, how, I don't even know how I get on got on that team. Now that I think about it. <laughs> so, so who who was the who was the roster? Some of the some of the teammates you had. With the so players? me, Tootie, um, Tamar Fortune, Eddie Griffin, um, Mike Cleves is on there. Who went to LaSalle. Um, Isaiah, I don't forget Isaiah's last name. He went to UMass. Marcus Tony L was on the team. Who went to Seton oh, Hall wow. with Eddie? Wow. Yeah, Tony we had a nice L. squad. Yeah, we had we had a nice squad. We had a real wow. nice squad. 
Dang, I, mean, man, it's, it's, I mean, we made it to the championship, so, you know, definitely was a nice team. Yeah, wow. And what, what kind of, what like, then, all right, first, the, another thing I want to put in perspective, a lot of people don't know how tall you are. We, we didn't even talk about that. How, how, how tall were you then? And did you grow any, any after? How, how tall I don't, were you? I don't, I don't remember growing at all since, like, high school. Man, I was 5'8", five, 5'7", five, give or take. Uh -huh. So all this... Big, so Obviously, with the big shorts, that that didn't help. <laughs> so hey, let me, let me, let me clear that up, though. Let me clear that up with the shorts. Oh, the shorts. Okay, talk about it. All right. Those were not my shorts. Now, <laughs> granted, my shorts legendary. are big. Hold on, hold on. Pause, pause, pause. Let the people know. We talking some legendary talk right now. This is legendary. Clear it up, man. Go to talk. So what happened was I had blood on my shorts. <laughs> so I had to get an alternate pair of shorts. And I'm, now, mind you, the shorts that I did wear, they were big too. But they wasn't <laughs> that big though. But listen, I always say this. I'm on, I'm on my chat with my, uh, my college guys. I told them, man, I don't have good friends, yo. <laughs> Somebody was supposed to tell me, do not wear those shorts, yo. <laughs> like, they were supposed to not let me wear those shorts. Like, yo, 20 years from now, this is going to look bad. <laughs> or whatever. So, so one of your homies should have pulled you aside because y'all been... was homies and said, yo, 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 little bro, not those, not those. Yeah, time out, coach, that. time out, not those, not those. <laughs> Why they let it. you go out there like that, man? That's it. That's it. That's all they had to do. Oh, I'm fight them. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But yeah, I, got, I, had blood, I had blood on my shorts, so that was the only ultimate period. But again, like I said, my shorts were big, though. They so were, you're, they, your, your shorts was big. We're that big. Yeah. And I never went between my legs. You nah, so what? So what? So what happened? What the reason why I wear them big shorts and the long socks is because I get cold fast. Anybody who knows me know, <laughs> like I get cold. Like if your air is on too high or too low, whatever the case may be, I'm gonna freeze and I'm not gonna have a good time. <laughs> okay. Like it's, I'm just, I'm no good cold at all. Yeah. Like it's overseas, it's practice gyms that's real cold. Sometimes I had to go to Lithuania hotel. No. Nope. No heat. It was cold. I just can't function when I'm cold. So it was more than just it wasn't. It was more than just a fashion statement. I just don't want my legs to be cold. Makes sense. <laughs> and if you see, like in high school, I wore them thick socks. Yes. I got that from DC. I was watch, I was watching dudes from DC and AAU. They used to wear the, the thick socks. The real, they called like, them socks. And big old yeah, socks. Yeah. I was like, bad. I need to have those. I put them on at one time, nice and warm. I need to be. I need to be warm, man. I need to be warm <laughs> to do no anything. Doubt. That makes sense. That 100 percent makes. Sense. I appreciate you clarifying that up, clearing yeah. it up. So you did not start with those shorts on. You got blood on your shorts. But again, like I said, them. I'm not. I'm not trying to make it seem like it was so far fetched. Those shorts. I mean, they probably made my regular shorts maybe like a, a little inch, a little smaller. <laughs> they right there too. In the hey, somebody said. Um, uh, Aunt Y said you was wearing sweatpants every day in practice. Yeah, that's my young guy from the Hill School. <laughs> yeah, I, I only wear sweats now. It, 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 once that once that trend came, I'm good. <laughs> like, oh yeah, you bet. This is right up my alley. <laughs> Summertime, I'm I'm still wearing sweats. I'm good. <laughs> oh man. Um. Oh, one thing. Just want to tell the people real quick. I appreciate. We got a lot of viewers. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Um. In in, in a few minutes. Um. Uh. The, the the Instagram is gonna count me down. It's gonna it's gonna end. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just end this one. Save it to my story. And then jump right back on, and you just rejoin me. We'll continue. All right. Got you. Got you. Got you. All right. And then I want to let everybody else know as well. Um, at the very end, y'all know the format. We're gonna have some Q and A. Let y'all ask uh, my man Spiz some questions. <laughs> um, let's talk about the Donna Frio, man. I, had, I on on that on that highlight reel I just uploaded has yeah. some classic clips on there from the Donna Frio. Talk about that experience, man. So the Donna Frio, man. I'm that that whole weekend changed my life. Speaking to AAU, so the Donna Frio that game was on a Monday. That weekend I went to Providence and played really really well. Played really, really well in Providence. Like, um, like an AAU type thing? Yeah, it was an AAU tournament in Providence. It was a big-time tournament. I played really, really good there. And then coming back Sunday, the next day was Monday, and you didn't have it on the camera, but I tell the people every coach in America was there to see Eddie Griffin because he was the number one player in the country. Uh -huh. And I had my best game <clears throat> yep. that time. And I remember leaving out that gym, my dad was just looking at me like, like he ain't never seen me play like that before. I never seen I never seen myself play like that. You know what I mean? Did you I mean, notice the coaches when you got in there? Yeah, yeah. Well, the Donna Frio is known for all those coaches being there. They Especially all back then, they were allowed. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now I had I had better 
high school game, the Harrisburg game was probably better overall. Uh-huh. But as far as AAU and that type of environment, no, nah, I never, I never played that well. So it was, it just all kind of came together. Yeah. You know? Who were who some of the coaches that you noticed kind of in the cut then? No, nah, I remember that whole row, man. It was uh, Coach K from Duke, uh, Gary Williams from Maryland, Notre Dame's coach. Um, I want to say UConn coach. Seton Hall was there. Like, they was all there. They was all there, that front row. And it, everybody knows Donna Friel. This is before it got renovated. Yeah. Like, it was, it was small. It was just a whole bunch of folding chairs. People yeah, it was small. Room, and they're right on top of you. Yeah. It's quiet. It's real quiet. You hear everything that's going on and everything like that. So it, now that atmosphere, I always love playing in Donna Frio. Always love playing there. No doubt. How always. many? How many? Uh, you played there like as many opportunities as you could. You always played. Yeah, my freshman Frio. year. My freshman year, I ain't I ain't really do too well. Um, we lost the first game. Then my second year, I played with my summer team, uh, with Mallory, and everything down Germantown. And uh, sophomore year, we we did real good. I can't remember how far we went. Then my junior year, we did. We played really well. Senior year, we got a bad um bad pick. We ended up playing the Road Runners like the first game. Ended up losing to them and everything like that. So it was Bro, cool. The road hit. runners, they 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 always bought the best from New Jersey, like always. And that was that was basically the Tim Tom, the players. Yeah, okay. that was them. So I was playing against my teammates in a sense gotcha. from AAU. Yeah, or whatever. Well, the road so runners. Was, that's why I saw like like Shaheen. Remember Shaheen Holloway? Shaheen Holloway, man. Like beast. Monster. Listen, when I when I when I was in middle school and I would go to the Donna Frio, man. I rem- I remember it was Point Breeze was playing Huntington Park. And I want to say Huntington Park had Lamar Plummer, rest in peace, Malik Moore. Um, I can't remember. It was some other player. Then Point Breeze had Donnie Carr, Yah Davis, Kirk King. Like, I thought about that. I thought about that game all day. Wow. I remember that. I was like, I can't wait to see this game. And they put on a show, man. They put on a show. <laughs> I can only imagine. Hey, um, is there anything else that you want to mention about the high school years or AAU or, or um, before we transition? Nah, that was pretty much it. We probably cared. We, yeah, we did everything for our high school and AAU. All right. So I, was ready, I, was ready, I was ready to get out of high school. Once no doubt. <laughs> I was ready to end, the, ready, ready to end those years. Yeah. <laughs> hey, question. Um, this is always something that's been on my mind. Five seven, five eight. You did a, you did extra, extraordinary things at your height. You know, height is not a factor. I, I want. I, I need to get out of that myself. Thinking, oh, you know, he he, he was short or this and that. Like height is never a factor. And people mm-hmm. people have proven that year year after year. But yeah. you are a thinker. You remember you said like just how much you used to be in your head, mm-hmm. tough on yourself and all that. When it when it became time for college recruiting, did you think that um, your height was going to be a factor? And like, were you concerned about that at all or not? Nah, I mean, I, I just, I just, I'll say this. I never really heard anybody say anything about my height. Okay. Like when I was growing up, I never really, really heard anybody say like, oh, you're too small. This is, I, I never heard that. Now, mm-hmm. I'm not saying they never said it. I just mm-hmm. don't think I ever heard that. Gotcha. And everything. Like, I don't remember that. And when I was being recruited, like, um, nobody mentioned it. You know, like nobody mentioned it. I remember uh, Calhoun called uh, UConn. They were talking to me and everything like that. I mean, at that time they had Elamine there, so it made sense mm-hmm. that they wouldn't care. Yeah. But I don't ever remember any school like, yeah, but your height and this. I don't remember any of that gotcha. because I think the number one thing I never really got my shot blocked. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. it, it, it. I never but played. Like to give them a reason to say something. Yeah. Like I, it was never a time where they like, you see, he's too small. He going in there getting shot blocked. He can't do like it, I never. I was smart enough to not get in certain places yeah. that I knew was in trouble. <laughs> no you know? doubt. You know hey, I mean? pa- hey, pause that. Um, all the viewers watching, um, Instagram's giving me a countdown. I'm going a, I'm to a exit this and um, restart it. And all, all of y'all join, and we're going we're gonna to pick up where we left off. All right, Spence? Yep. All right, and then you just send me a, a you know a new request and everything. Okay, cool. All right. All right, we back. Marcus Green, the legend, the general, Norristown, St. Bonaventure, part two. Everybody tuning in, um, I appreciate you guys, man. This has been another classic, um, you know, speechless, man. Legendary stories, man. The, le- the legend, the legendary stories continue. Going to get my man Marcus Green back on here. We're going to continue talking about um, college basketball, his college basketball experiences uh, at St. Bonaventure. I'm um, going to talk about his pro career, and he uh, actually recently retired. 
Um, so, yeah. Also, um, get y'all questions ready. Uh, we're gonna have a nice little Q&A at the very end. Um, I actually already started jotting down a few questions, um, but if anybody has any questions uh, for Marcus Green, um, you know, make sure you guys start sending them in the comment section um, so I can let the people ask some questions at the end. Here's my man. Here we go. We good? Yep, all good. Cool. All right, so the last thing you were saying, um, you were just talking about, um, you know, uh, your height, you know, not being a factor. You, you never heard that. And then, you know, what you think it may have been, you know, you said, you know, you never got shot blocked. But, you know, continue talking, you know, continue. Yeah, right I mean, there. it's, um, I mean, people are smart. Basketball coaches and everything, they're smart. Like, I, I really, even a professional, I really never heard, like, any coach or anything, like, saying, like, hey, yeah, we can't take you because of your height. It's, like, I never heard that. Yeah. You know, maybe they said it behind closed doors or something. Like, I don't know, but it, it never yeah. was a factor. And I think the main reason why it was, it wasn't a factor, is because the way I played. It's not uh -huh. like I'm going into the paint constantly and trying to do layups, get my shot blocked. I'm pulling up. I'm jump stopping. I'm floating. I'm passing no and everything. <laughs> no, doubt. no doubt. So so how did – um? and this is – um, you know, I just want you to um, ha hash on this for a second because mm -hmm. there are some – you know, undersized guards, like um, a really good, um, um, well, not not undersized, but a really good guard um, who, who's not that tall is Rodier Hicks from okay. that play with Deuce Turner at, at the at Malvern Prep, you know, from Coatesville, Rodier Hicks yeah, from yeah, Coatesville, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ricky Hicks' son. Yep. Um, you know, like I see, he's really effective at his size. I mean, he's a monster, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Jump defensively style. too. I watched this game. That's what I'm saying. So, so for some young guards in high school that are watching right now, what are some tips for 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 a small for a, a guard that's that's under six foot. Well, one you got you got to get your jump shot together. That's the number one thing, and you got to learn that separation game, the angle game. Um, like when I work out with guys, especially young guards, you got to be able to knock shots down over big, big, big guys and everything like that. That's like one of the main things. Mm -hmm. Like, get your separation, work on your footwork and everything like that, and constantly work on jump shots and everything uh -huh. like that. Floaters is your best friend. <laughs> yeah. Like that is your best friend right there. Floater stopping at the paint. I mean stopping at the free throw line, pulling up and slowing down mm -hmm. and everything. Like, you know, so a lot of you know how it is, a lot of small people got big men complex where they trying yeah. to prove I can go in here, I can do uh uh. Listen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you don't have Stay to Stay in your lane. Nothing. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. And it's okay. You know yeah. what I mean? Like <laughs> big men get frustrated when you stop and just float it over, and they jump it all in the air, and they can't get it. Uh -huh. You won. It's a chess no game, not checkers. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> you know? No doubt. All right. So, so tell me about the um. Tell me about your what your um what you remember about your um college recruiting process. All the schools that were recruiting you. Just kind of you know take take me through the process, and then what ultimately led you to um choose the St. Bonaventure. Yeah. So, like we talked about earlier, um, Rutgers Rutgers was one of the um, they were recruiting me hard. Um, like I said, Villanova, I made it very, like I said, I'm very, I made it very clear um, that I didn't want to stay home. You know, I didn't think I was mature enough. I didn't, I just, you know, I, I just didn't think I was ready to do that. And there's nothing, it's nothing against anybody who stayed home. And if you choose mm -hmm. to stay home, that's you. I just know me. I have to be honest with myself that I don't think that was, a, that would have been good. Yeah. So Villanova recruited me, like I said, UNC Greensboro, Fran McCaffrey, Hostriff did with Jay Wright. They were, they were great. I mean, and he said J Jay Wright, Villanova's Jay Wright was there? Yeah, he was at Hostriff. And Speedy Claxton was there as a senior. So they were like, yo, Speedy's going to get drafted. You come right in, start, and everything like that. They, like, they were great. Um, they were really good. So when I got to St. Bonaventure, it was, you know, what it was when I got there was in the middle of nowhere, small campus. And you really, you really, um, you choose schools based on the players. Like, I met my two long, long brothers, like, Forever Brothers, J.R. Bremer and Vidal Messiah. They took me around, and I felt like I'd known them for years. Gotcha. It's like, yo, we got you. Mm -hmm. And it was it was pretty simple, to be honest with you. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, like I said, it was small. That's exactly what I needed. It was in the middle of nowhere. It was in the 810, so I knew I'd be coming home to play. Okay. And it was like five and a half hours away, where it's not too far where I can't get home, but not too close where I'd be like, oh, I'm coming home every weekend. Yeah, true. And everything. So, and then they had Ty Weeks was assistant coach. 
He's from Philly. He's like, yo, whenever uh -huh. I come to Philly, I got you. No doubt. You know what I mean? His 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 wife cooked and everything. Um, Coach Lombardi, she was they was Italian, love Italian feud. They would have me over once a week, so it it was kind of like a no brainer, you know, yeah. in a sense. So it was um, a lot of pieces. You were you were away, small school, but it seemed like it was still a lot of pieces that still connected you connected you to the area. Yeah, Tyrone yeah. Weeks, you mm -hmm. know, being from Philly, that connection. The and the games, and, and then coming playing Temple so you LaSalle, that Temple LaSalle, Saint, Saint, Saint Joe's. Joe's, yeah. Yeah, so that's so six. You, that's six games right there. I mean, that's home three games, home three games, games, basically home games and everything like. Yeah. And then you know, my parents and family they they came to all the games. And then you had to think we had Fordham, which is in New York. That's another trip you can make. And then D.C. George Washington. That's another trip. Yes. So it, you know, I mean, it, it just worked out. You know. Yeah. And they, Tim Wynn was the guard before me. He was a small guard. They had Shandu McNeil. So I'm like, all right, you know, they used to small guards and everything like that. It's, it should be straight. Yeah. So that's why. How did, so when school starts, whether it was like, you know, a uh, little summer thing, you know, before school, you know, all the players go up there. What, what was that first experience like? Yeah, I remember that. There? I remember, I, I remember that. I'm, I remember driving up there, excuse me. And um, I was that whole summer, my whole senior year of high school, I was so ready to get up. Like, I just felt like this is a waste of year for me. <laughs> I was like, man, I got to get out of here. Like, I'm off high school. I'm done. I'm yeah. done. I'm done with high school. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm tired of not being able to go to the gym to work out and everything like that. Let me get up out of here. So yeah. I remember when I went up to St. Bonaventure the first day, I get to my room, you know, my mom and sister, they want to decorate the room. They do all this, whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm literally thinking, Star, all right, they're leaving. I'm thinking they're leaving. They're out of here. They're like, nah, we staying for a couple days. Because I was like, yo, like, yo y'all got to go. I have to get to the gym. I gotta get. I gotta. Get, I gotta get to work. Yes. Like I have to get to work. I'm, I'm, I'm focused. Yeah. I mean, it was cool, but I was just like, um, and it, it wasn't no animosity. I ain't hate nobody. This and that. I was just like, I have to get on with my life. Like I'm this ready is, to start this, my journey. I'm ready to start is, my journey. I was ready to start my journey. Mm -hmm. Um. So my freshman year, um, you have nightmares. I don't think kids will have it too much bad this year. I mean, this generation because. We didn't lift weights in high school and everything. Now, you know, a lot of these kids, they're lifting weights. They're, you know, yeah. training and everything like that. We didn't man. have that. Like some, some kids in high school or middle school, like, kind of doing things that college exactly. players and pros are doing. Yeah. But at that time, that wasn't going on. So I had the nightmare stories of, yo, they be having the trash cans around. You're going to be throwing up, running. And it may still be the same like that or whatever. Yeah. And so in my eyes, I'm like, yo, that's not going to happen to me. I'm, I'm working hard. I'm. I'm running, I'm getting ready, and this, this, and that. And so I was cool. I was cool with the running. Guys were throwing up. I was killing the drills. Now, in the weight room, that's a whole different whole different ball game. I was small, skinny, yeah. um, and everything. So, What's up, nephew? Say what's up. What's up? All right. So so the weight room was the tough part. So that, you know, that was a transition. Um, I'm not – I wasn't – I didn't really like the party scene there. Yeah. So that, that was another reason why I went there. I was like, okay. I don't really like the party scene here, like – that's not going to be a distraction and everything like that. So the transition was cool. You know what I mean? It was cool. I didn't, I remember Ty Weeks yelling at me about not running the team the right way. I know uh, Norristown and the Hill School, they hear me. I'm at the point guards all the time. What play we in? Run the team, direct the team. Cause that, that's what they was on me about and yeah. everything. Um, but it was an up and down. So, year. You, they, so they wanted you to kind of be like the leader, like the voice, like at, when you not came so much in, a leader, pressure. but if you're the point guard, you got to control the game. You got to control no the doubt. team. You got to tell no guys doubt. where to go and everything. And I didn't, uh -huh. I didn't, I didn't understand what they were saying at first because uh -huh. I was used to in high school, like, hey, just you know, just play. But they like, <laughs> but they wanted you to orchestrate. And play, you know, yo, you, this dude turned the ball you know. over. This guy turned the ball. I'm getting yelled at. Gotcha. I'm getting screamed on, and I'm like, what? What are they talking about? Uh -huh. So it took a while for me to adjust to that and everything like that, but yeah. Hey, overall, curious, curious. What, yep. what? Um. So when you when you first came in and some of your teammates, um, besides the ones that may have been on your initial recruiting visit, visit. Mm -hmm. When you when you were introduced to the rest of the teammates, when they see this little, you know, five seven, five eight guy. Well, they knew me already. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, they knew me already. So okay, they gotcha. um. So you all right? So I went for my recruiting visit, but then I went back up there in like April. It was like spring weekend. Get down. Okay. Get down. It's like spring weekend or whatever. And they, um, so basically I was there again. I met, okay. I met all of them. 
Okay, so you are. Already, already and then when they and then when they came to Philly to play when I was a senior in high school, I was um I I met up with them too. So gotcha. I, yeah, I knew all of them. It wasn't gotcha. like it was when they knew who I was. So it was gotcha. cool. Um. When did, did did they already were, were they already sold on your game and you being a leader? Yeah, because um, <laughs> yeah, because when I went in April, I played pickup with them. Okay, and that's when they was like, <laughs> that's, it was like, that's what I, that's what I wanted to know. Like, yeah. At what point did they realize? Oh, this little dude's the truth. We're gonna get behind him. He's gonna be our leader. <laughs> yeah, because I was passing the ball. You, you, you went everybody over when you passed the ball. Oh no, no, I remember them saying they like, yo, the right you, you pass like and everything like that. So <laughs> it was cool. They were they was just so much stronger, man. Yeah. Like I, I, yo, they were so strong. Like to me, I'm like, yo, this weight room is gonna bury me. I remember, <laughs> I remember walking around, walking around in school. My body is just aching, like sore, like done, in a sense or whatever, like that. So you know, what I mean that that was that was the hard part, you know, and everything like that. Yeah. What um. What uh, before we talk about like memorable experiences, memorable games, all that? What was the like the the biggest transition you know from high school to college? You think was it was the, it the, 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 part? the physical part? The physical, the physical part. part. Um, because I was still fast. I was still faster than guys. I could I could shoot it. I understood the game and everything. But when they do this, hit you with that bump and everything. <laughs> you know what I mean, and so and uh, Binky Johnson he looked out. He told me he was like, "Look, man, it's going to be a lot of." down screens you got to fight through screens and fight through ball screens and everything's gonna be like that was that was probably the biggest part gotcha. like going through that physical the physical <laughs> part and everything like that gotcha gotcha so just um i don't want to ask you too many questions i just want you to talk about it so just relive your saint bonaventure career highlighting just you know any memorable <laughs> games um you know big games you had players you played against just just talk about it yeah so Sophomore year, so my freshman year, the coach left. We had a whole new coach, soft, my sophomore and junior year. And that really, like, wow. opened up my game. He, it was, like, up and down. That's when J.R. Bremer, um, my backcourt mate, my big bro, he, I think he led the, led the nation to scoring, or he was, like, first or second or something like that. Um, and it was just up and down. I remember we played uh, Boston College, Troy Bell. Man, I nightmares, man. Look, we was, we was winning by, like, 18, 20 points and lost. What? Wow. Man, we lost. We lost that game. When I tell you the video session the next day, I thought I was the worst basketball player in the world. <laughs> like literally. Why? Man, if you if anybody who plays sports and you video sessions are the worst after a loss. <laughs> like the worst thing anybody can do when say, I'm sure Satan invented the rewind button. That <laughs> rewind button is murder constantly showing your mistakes over in front of everybody is you sweating and it, it's just it was bad man it was bad i, I got cursed out so bad like oh, do we God. have a point guard that can help this team that i'm right here Coach, <laughs> <what you're talking laughs> hey man it listen it will humble you remember uh she broken bro said yesterday with cheney or whatever yes. the video yes. like listen man listen it's, it's no hose we ran so much um, but then that same year we beat UConn. We went up to UConn, beat them. And who did they that have? A, they had Karan Butler, had Talit Brown, they had Ben Gordon, Mecca Okafer. Okay. But they was they was freshmen though. Okafer and Ben Gordon was freshmen. And I think we like broke their record for home court or whatever like that. And that was that was like a that was like a real big game for me. Cause uh -huh. um it was I remember it was like it was yesterday. It was uh December twenty eighth and my aunt had just passed mm -hmm. or whatever like that. So I was just like, 2001, I was like, man, let's just get this year over with. Like, I, I just got to get out this year or whatever yeah. like that. So that was a that was a big game. Uh, we played Temple at home. Uh, we beat them. When they, had they, Lynn, had? they had Lynn, Kevin Lye, Dave Hawkins, all those dudes, whatever. Uh, we, we They just caught us on a, on a real bad night. Like, we were on fire. Like, we were on fire and everything uh -huh. like that. So it was beat Xavier with David West and Sato whatever um yeah, that was a good game yeah in junior year that was that was like my coming out party um played really well that year unfortunately so, so wait wait oh, so tell me uh so talk about the junior year but before you get there tell me what you did between your between the Freshman. last game of your sophomore season until the first game of your junior no season. we gotta go back we gotta go back this okay I got this the yes. end of my freshman year Mm -hmm. This is key. I can't remember. I, I can't believe I was about to forget this. Yes. After my freshman year, I wasn't happy with my season. 
at all. Okay. Wasn't happy. You wasn't happy with the freshman season? My freshman season at all. Wasn't happy okay. at all. I started off good, but, you know what I mean, it just, just wasn't a good year. And so I'm one of those people like, all right, man, it's nothing, nothing like I'm, I'm an extremist or whatever like that. I think I averaged like seven points or whatever like that freshman year, which is not bad. But anyway, mm-hmm. I was like, man, I got to change everything. So it, remember, I was doing 6 a.m. morning workouts. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, that's not good enough. I stopped drinking. I didn't go out. And literally, I worked out when everybody party. Got gotcha. you. 10, 30, 11 o'clock. I was in the gym, had my radio. <laughs> it's <laughs> crazy. Had a radio back then. And I would party to like 10, 30, 11 to like 2 or 3 in the morning. Just uh-huh. me in the gym, in the ball. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. literally, that changed my life. Mm-hmm. That took my game from here to here. Mm-hmm. Just like that. And it was to the point, like I said, I'm a streamist. If people would ask me, because I didn't, I, I didn't drink, I didn't drink the rest of college. I, I didn't drink at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and people would act, like, you know, friends or teammates, whatever. I mean, it wasn't malicious. They'd be like, hey, come on, come on, let's have a drink, whatever, whatever, like that. And I remember pulling a few over to the side. I was like, listen, if you ask me to have a drink again, I'm going to take it personal that you're not really for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm gonna start taking it personal mm-hmm. and everything like that. So I was just, I was just all the way in, like all the way in. <laughs> yes. Like, li- like when I say all the way in, I was literally all the way in. Yes. Like, <laughs> and it, and it, it was kind of weird because I didn't want to do nothing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like sometimes I would go out to parties because you know you got to kind of do that for team camaraderie. Yeah, to break it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not so much to break it up. I oh, was the just team, like, you stay kind yeah, of for the team, team yeah. thing. I'm like, all right, I can't not come. You know what I mean? And, and, or, and alienate myself. Yeah, yeah, but when I was there, I'm like, man, I don't want to be here. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm constantly thinking about what I could be doing. No doubt. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm kind of still like that now. I'm, I'm better now. Whereas like I don't want to waste time on things. Like even like if somebody sends me an article or a clip of a video mm-hmm. and I'd be like, man, I just waste my two minutes with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> or whatever. Like I'm real big on time. Like yeah. it's, you know what I mean? So that, that was the, that was the groundwork right there. Yeah. And that, that was that, like, that was the framework in that, that, and that was the beginning of the next couple years. Yeah. That was the kind of the beginning of me, like really starting to kill like summer leagues and everything like that. Like mm-hmm. it was, I took, that was like the next level and it showed, Cause I think my sophomore year I was like fifteen to seven, gotcha, or whatever like that. And then the next year after that, going into my junior year, it was the same thing. It was literally the same thing. Like, hey, let's keep going to work. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Cause Jr. was leaving, Vidal was leaving, my seniors was leaving. I got to step it up. Mm-hmm. And so I averaged twenty four and eight my junior year, or whatever yep. like that. Yep. And so I just. I was just all I was just zoned in, man. Just really like zoned in, or whatever. Yeah, like that. We, we, me and you, we have a going joke since high school or since. Forever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, all every time I see you, I'm like, "Yo, Spence, we gonna go work out? We gonna go work right?" Because oh, literally, that's all I did. Because that's all you did. That's all I did. And you would always be like, "What up? I got my shorts. I got like always prepared. Always but ready. You was always either you know we wasn't hanging, about to go work out, or coming from working out. That's so it. that just became the thing. I mean, Listen, my finished. routine, my my routine, my routine was I would get up in the morning, go work out, and get my daughter, Lyric, at like 12. Spend the whole day with her, take her home at night, do it all over again. Mm-hmm. Literally, that's that was my that was my days. No and then in the summertime, you could put you could, I was working like the summer camps, the Villanovas, the yep. Uh, Delaware and everything. I was working the summer camps and stuff, so that you know that helped too. But that was it, man. Like I mean, as far as far as college, like that was it. Um, a, a few. I, I was doing some research earlier. I'm gonna just read off um some some of your accolades and you know, some of your accomplishments, and you can you know fill in the blanks. Um, so at the um, let me see. Um. Uh, Saint Bo- well, you got you got inducted into the Saint Bonaventure Hall of Fame, correct? No, I was um. Oh, I'm sorry. Had, was um, it was the all time team. They picked the top, team, 20, yes. top twenty players of all time. Of all time, got gotcha. So that was yeah, that was a big honor. That was um in December. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, twenty four points. I think. I think you averaged. Um, I'm not sure if it was your junior senior year. You averaged twenty four points, five assists. Um, you, you, it was fifth, you were fifth in scoring nationally, uh, assists, you were third, um, 
best in the eight ten. Uh, you let you let the conference in scoring. You said uh, 20, 21, 21.3 points and eight assists. What what year was that that you led the conference in scoring with that twenty one um, and eight? My junior, it was my junior year. I don't I don't think I I don't think I led the conference my senior year in scoring. I don't All think right, I well, did yeah. that. It was it was definitely. I read that today that you led the conference in scoring. So that was two thousand three, two thousand two, two thousand three. All right, so that was 21 points, 21.3 points, and eight assists. Um, the one year, though, something that stuck out to me on the stat line, I'm not sure if it was your sophomore year or senior year, I'm not sure, um, you averaged four steals a game, man. That's a lot. Yeah, we was pressing a lot. <laughs> like, to average four steals a game, that's a lot of steals, man. Yeah, we, we, was, we pressed a lot, man. And I could gamble as much as I wanted, you know what I mean, the coach – he, he just kind of let me go as far as defensively. So just using your instincts, you know, you kind of, you kind of pick up on people's patterns, yeah. how they dribble and everything like that. Most people kind of dribble the same, uh -huh. you know, it's a one, two pattern, you know what I mean? And everything like that. And just time the ball. The best time to steal the ball is when the ball's on the ground. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people don't know that. Like when you're uh -huh. dribbling, when the ball's in their hand, you shouldn't go for it. When it hitting the ground, meet it at the ground. Gotcha. And you can get it like that sometimes. Makes sense. Um, you completed school with eight eight records, eight eight school records. Um, a couple, not all of them, but a couple of them were. Um, you had fourteen assists in a game versus LaSalle. I remember that game. Um, that yeah, who who was that? Who was at LaSalle at that time? You can remember. And they had they had Steve Smith. Steve Smith, man, I got to get you that game. I think I got that game, LaSalle game. Please game. do, man. Steve Smith caught the nastiest tip dunk I ever mm -hmm. seen, man. He came out of nowhere. Wow. Yeah. So that was a good one. Um. um and you had um, uh, you ended with 657 career assists, uh, 325 career steals, 281 three pointers in your career, and the list the list was so long. Your accomplishments at St. Bonaventure. Was so listen, man, this this the, this the crazy thing during the um, when we went back December 7th for the all time team when they were naming that when they was introducing me. Man, I didn't even know all that. Dog, the list. If, mm -hmm. if, if if anyone watching this right now, you just go on Wikipedia, put in Mark's name, Marcus Green. The list of accomplishments. It was like pages and pages and pages and pages. I'm like, yo, this is insane. Crazy. And then Jr. Bremer, he he said to me, he's like, Mark, I ain't know you did all that. I was like, I ain't know neither. <laughs> like when you listen, when you in it, when you in it, you're not think like, it, you know, you got to think it's 2000 to 2004, so. Nobody's breaking down like watching YouTube or watching. It's none of that social media. You have to actually read the newspaper to get yes. all this type of information. Yes. And I probably wasn't going to do that, to be honest with you. Look, look at school. the box scores after the game. Tell your stat man, get you the stats. Or, you know what I mean? Like, that nah, was too much work. I, <laughs> man, you got, man, listen, it's cutthroat in basketball. Yeah. Like, you play Tuesday, you better be ready for Friday. No doubt. <laughs> you better be ready I, I guess Friday. the rule of thumb is you're only, you're only as good as your next game. Yep. And Last Shaq had a Shaq had a more. Shaq had a good quote: "Never get too high, never get too low." Mm -hmm. So I don't, and I, I don't take that advice all the time because I can really, really get low. To be honest with yeah. you, yeah. like I let them losses really eat at me. But wins is just like moving on, I know, like that's moving right. on. Just cause moving they, next. because yeah. they because they ready next game. Trust uh -huh. me. <laughs> um, in college, who were some of the top players that you played against? Oh man, for real. As I mean, your position. For, yeah, of course, Jameer was one. Um, Lin, Lin Greer, shh, the A-10 was tough, man. Lionel Chalmers was tough. Um, T.J. Thompson from George George Washington. Monty Mack was tough from UMass. Shh, it was it was it was tough, man. It was tough. Ramon Marshall from uh, Dayton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean the point guard position is always going to be tough. Like mm -hmm. from high school, college, even overseas, is the point guard position is always you can't sleep. Uh huh. You can't sleep. Even the European point guards. Yeah. Like it, you cannot sleep on them dudes, man, mm -hmm. at all. So, yeah. yeah, it was it was it was it was some battles. Qu question for you, um, before we talk about, um, is is there anything else that you want to mention about co about college? Oh, one one thing about college. Do you, I got I got to try to get some of those uh, Saint Bonaventure versus Temple, you versus Lynn, uh, Saint Bonaventure versus Saint Joe's. I need to try to get some of that. I stuff. think I got. I think I got. Um, I got to ask my dad. I think he got a couple couple games. Yeah, if I could try to, yeah, yeah, I'm um, sure he do. Yeah. Um, do you, before we talk about, um, you know, your pro career, one question I want to ask you, and you don't even have to like answer it all quick. You can think, think about it for a second or you, or you just, just first thing that comes to your mind. Um, do bye, you we think, hold on. Bye. Bye. We talked about the shorts. 
Oh, uh, what, what happened? <laughs> nah, my homie Vibe. Uh, oh, oh yeah, we, yeah. He keep bringing up. You ain't bring up the shorts. One, he already knows the story. Two, yeah, yeah. we already talked about it. So we're oh, not yeah, bringing we, it up yeah. no more. <laughs> and, you, and you gave that up yourself. You, 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 yeah. you, you carved out time. You adjust the shirts yourself. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So my, my question is this. Do you think you could have played in the NBA? Yes. Yes. I, I do think so. Um, I think at that time, it was an all big guard league. Because I remember, I remember when Jameer came out, they were saying he was too small. And I remember when J.R. Bremer came out to be a point guard, they was like, yeah, hey, he's too small. Because you got to think, at that time in 2002, 2003, top point guards was Jason Kidd, Chauncey Billups. They 6'4", mm 6'5". -hmm. Yeah. You know? Like now. And even Iverson. Iverson was like 6'4", 6'5". No, Iverson's six foot, but that's oh, a freaking nature, foot? though. Yeah, that's a freaking nature, though. Oh, I thought, I thought he you know I mean? was taller than that. So even um, even um, Eric Snow, mm -hmm. like everybody was tall. Steve Francis was a tall point guard. Yeah. Like and everybody strong, was and big, and strong, solid guys too. Yeah. So they it wasn't no small guards. Like now it's not a big deal. But then it was it was it was real rare. But I I thought I thought I I could for sure. Mm -hmm. Definitely thought I could as I'm watching it and everything like that. But you know, didn't happen. Yeah. Well, like would that. you would you what, what what would be the experience when you're watching television and you see you and you see guys that you were destroying or guys that you competed with you know because i mean your defense was on point so you can i'm sure you can defend yeah i mean it, put the ball on the floor and then they I got mean, it's, um, you know like when i like for my first couple of years when i was overseas and i would watch the nba it, it was never no jealousy or anything like that you know because i i know i know what it is you know in a sense or whatever like that. It's a numbers game. It's a right fit, right, you know, and everything like that. And, man, I'm blessed, man, like, to, to be able to play and and play for money and travel the world. Like, I, it, you know what I mean? I'm good. Like, no I'm doubt. all the way good and everything. <laughs> no doubt. So, so, so um, one, of the, one of the last um, chapters of this story we want to talk about before we wrap it up, um, and just, just to let the people know, I appreciate all the viewers. Um, we're going to have a, 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 an, an insane Q&A with Marcus Green at the end. So I'm going to just let y'all, you know, rattle off and ask some questions um, at the end. Um, but just want to talk about your overseas experience. Let's, let's talk about your journey after St. Bonaventure. So, um, so when I graduated, I mean, when I, when I, yeah, when I graduated and left St. Bonaventure, I remember I went to this, uh, my agent told me to go to this, like this overseas camp or whatever down in uh, North Carolina. It was in June. It was like right before Father's Day. And the coach there, his name John Denae, John Dene, he came up to me and was like, hey, I want you to come over to France. He's like, I always take small guards. He took Shante Rogers from GW and everything. He's like, I'll let you just play a game. It'll be good for your first first career, first like, you know, like after first you had worked out already, or he came up to you before the camp started? Nah, he, he, I, he, he didn't even see me. He, he said he watched me play in college. Okay. He said he watched gotcha. me play in college. So, gotcha. so that, that, that's all he needed to see. That's all. He was like, that's all, or whatever like that. So I was like, all right, bet. You know what I mean? Like, Cool. Because it, listen, it's a lot of things people don't realize and that transition from when you're done college to trying to get a job, man, that, that's, that could be some real kind of lonely, depressing stuff. And I'm glad I didn't have to go through that. This was less than a month. I had a job already mm -hmm. and everything. So I was just working out, getting ready. Now, mind you, this is 2004, everybody. I, I fly over there on a Saturday, Saturday. And in, in Europe, everything shuts down on Sunday at that time. They're much better now. Man, I'm going to this small city. You no know, restaurants is open. This dude talking about some. Um, hey, I'll take you to McDonald's to eat. I don't eat that. I don't. I don't eat none of <laughs> that. That was that was never your style. <laughs> I, I don't eat that. But he's thinking all Americans do. Yeah. Man, I was so depressed that first year, man. Wow. I ain't had no computer, no cell phone, um, no cable. Like it, it's none of that going on. Mm -hmm. If you bought a calling card and called me, that means you love me. No doubt. <laughs> like seriously, you love me. No doubt. <laughs> and everything. Man, it was it was lonely. It was lonely. And again, I wasn't going out. I had an old vet, uh, 35-year-old, uh, Gary Alexander. He was super, super dude. He was a great dude. But I just didn't listen to him, though, like that. And I'm not talking about on the court. He would try to take me to Paris. Like, come on, man, come out with me to Paris. Like, take, take me to see stuff. I was like, I ain't going nowhere. I'm sitting in, I'm going practice, working out. That's it. Yeah. That's all I want to do or whatever. That's why I always tell people I played in France, but I didn't live in France. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't experience like I should have experienced it. Gotcha. Because I was so depressed. 
yeah. you know what I mean, and yeah. everything like that. So, I mean, how did you get by, you know, during those tough times? Um, basketball, I played good. Yeah. I made the all-star team my first year and wow. everything like that. You know, I played played good. And what was the name um, of the team then? Rowan. Rowan. <laughs> it's in a small city in France. It was it was cool though. It was cool. So how, um, how what, what what type of performances was you putting up? No, nah, I was I, I played really good, man. I played really good. And I I was blessed. Another thing, I was blessed, man. My parents came to my first three games. Wow. Like my first game was in Paris. They flew into Paris, went to my first game. Then we had another game against Mir Chapman. A lot of people probably don't know about him. Great guard, man, from Texas. Played against him my second game. Then my third game, played his team Shalom. I had a buzzer beater three to win the game. Played against Cephalosius. Wow. I think I got that game too, Star. Please, please. I think I got that game too. Please. But um, it was it, – it, like that That was a blessing right there, man. If they didn't come, I would have been all messed up. You know oh, what I mean? Man. But just, just that comfort of, all right, my first few games professional, I got my peoples here with me uh-huh. and everything. So – yeah, I played in Rowan. Then the next year, I played in a team called Nancy. Um, we lost in the championship. Still pissed about that. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that was Nancy, right? Nancy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was uh, the year. That was the game against John Lenahan. John Lenahan. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that was a, we played them in the semifinals to make it to the chip. Gotcha. And at that time, it was only one game for the chip. It wasn't a series. Because okay. if it was a series, we would have won that joint. Gotcha. So that was the first two years in France. Then after that, I went to Turkey. Turkey was, like I said, Turkey was great. We met some great people there um, in Ankara. Did really good. Made the playoffs. Like, had a really good year that year. I got guard of the year um, that year and everything. It was, a, it was a good year. And then after that, I uh, went to Italy. And that's when I played with Dev Smith, Eric Williams from Wake Forest. Um, we won the Italian Cup that year. It was a, that was probably my best professional year mm-hmm. overseas. That year in Italy? And what, what team was that? That was uh, the team I mainly played for, Avellino. Okay. I played for like most of my years over there and everything. Got you. Hey, if we if we can take a quick pause, man. I just see the people don't really understand our relationship. We are brothers, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. We slept for people who don't know. We slept on the same couches, and you know what I'm saying. Like we lived together for over summers, and we were you know what I'm saying. This is my, this is my brother right here, and, and and this is this is how much he loves me. Okay, we're talking about overseas. Oh, you got that, John. <laughs> We talking about overseas basketball, and look what I got, Mo. That's you know the name. That's the not. That's the non C shorts right there. Okay, and then, and then look. This, this is how much Marcus Green loves Big Star. Look, look, look at it. Look at this. I didn't know you had those neither. Look at this. I you know, only had those. Listen, I'm a I'm a pack rat. You remember that day I was at the crib and said, "Look, go ahead, go ahead through the back. Go take some stuff." This, this is. Everybody you know, got my stuff, man. I'm a I'm a pack rat, man. It's like it's like the episode of um no not episode. Remember on um coming to America when 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 uh, uh, Eddie and um oh yeah when they left the apartment and everybody had their stuff like what? just taking their stuff. Yes, but but listen, man. Um, so 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 cra- crazy years, man. So so that you said that was the main team you played with, Avellino. Mm-hmm. And so so what what was um. You know, what were the experiences in Avellino, man? Man, it was good, man. That that's a special place because that's where um my son was born, Mir was born, and everything like that. That was that was like a great year. Um you know, but you the unfortunate part, sometimes what happens is you don't realize how great it is until afterwards. Gotcha. You know what I mean? When you in it, you know what I mean, it's just like you more of a grind, we're winning, it's good, but you're thinking of the next year. Mm-hmm. I know I was. I was thinking like, I wonder what's gonna happen next year or this, this, and that, whatever like that. So, yeah. looking back on it now, I'm like, man, that was that was a good that was a good year, a good time. Yeah, I was playing real good and everything. Had a good team, chemistry was great, mm-hmm. and that happened a few times actually. I have a few years like that where things was just nice and good and everything, but I missed the moment. You know what yeah. I mean? Sometimes that happens. You, it's just. I mean, I, I tell people this all the time. You take people. I have friends in Milan and in Paris and everything like that. And while I'm here in America, they like, dang, it's so great there, huh? How is it this is net? I'm like, yo, enjoy where you're at. And then I have people <laughs> here in America when I'm overseas, it's like, oh, I know it's so great there, this is net. Enjoy where you're at. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? People don't live in the moment. Exactly. In the sense like that. Like, and I know I'm guilty of it too. Uh-huh. Like, it's plenty of times I'm like, 
uh, what was it 2014, 13, 14 season. I was in Sardinia, um, whatever, with the team. We won the Italian Cup. The next year, so so what, like what's, the, of, what's the Italian Cup like? Champ, like the it's not really. It's hard to describe. It's because it's not. It's nothing equivalent to that. The only thing I could kind of equivalent is like a conference championship in college basketball, like an SEC championship, okay. ACC championship, okay. Big East championship, kind, kind of something like that, but gotcha. bigger. I would say yeah. it's kind of bigger though. Gotcha. But anyway. When I talk to my teammates from that team afterwards, it's like, hey, man, it was great, this and that. But during the time, we was arguing, <laughs> acting like we depressed, this and that, even though we winning. Yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? So it's like, I wish I could, like, go back and just enjoy those moments and yeah. everything like that, you yeah. know, in a sense. So. Remember uh, last night, uh, Rashid Brooklynboro was telling his stories, and he was saying how, um, like, how, how the Americans, you know, not, not retreated, but just like, you know, games may not have you know your contract may not have been guaranteed you can get you can get you can get fired at any time did you ever experience yeah. like kind of being on a hot seat or like not knowing if you oh yeah i was on a hot seat a few times um yeah so my first man my first year my first year so <laughs> my first year i actually got cut okay which is crazy even though yeah. i made the all-star team wow so what happened, so what See, happened that's, was that's what I'm talking about. all right so what happened was i um i tore tissue i tore tissue in my chest one game. Oh, okay. It was weird. Never had it before. And they were trying to tell me, yeah, you should only be out three weeks. So the old head vet on my team was like, he snuck me. He had a girl that was French. They snuck me to another doctor like an hour away that they knew. And I got my x-rays. They weren't even trying to give me my x-rays. I got x ray I sent my x-rays back to St. Bonaventure doctor. And the other French doctor that my friends had, they was like, nah, you're supposed to be out like a month, seven weeks. So they, they fighting back and forth with them on that. That's basically why they cut me and everything like that. They like, no, nah, you only got three weeks. This, this, and that. Whatever. It's all in your mind. So they wanted you. They wanted to bring you back sooner rather than later. And one of the when the game I got hurt, one of the Americans, Mayor Chapman, he told me the one I told you about from Texas, great player, played with Iverson over in Turkey too at Besiktas. Mm -hmm. He told me he was like, hey, young fella, don't let them just give you no pills and be like, yo, you all right? And this, this, and that. He's like, yo, take your time. Yeah. It's in your rights. It's in your contract to take your time. Because it was weird. I couldn't do anything. It, it was a freak accident. I don't even know how it even happened. Hmm. So that was that. Um, yeah, man. Listen, you're not going to always play good. Yeah. And they can't be sitting around waiting for you to get it together if you want to shoot yourself. <laughs> <laughs> like that. That's Games are being lost. So, what? you know what I mean? Like a few times I was on a hot seat and it's pressure bus pipes, man. Like I, it, Now I'm laughing about it. <laughs> I'm literally laughing about it. But when I was in it, it was stressful. Yeah, it was. It was stressful. But now it's 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 funny to look at it now because it's like, it's not even that serious. You yeah. would have got another job. Yeah. It would have been all right. <laughs> yeah. You know What's what the mean? longest? What, like, how, how, like, what, what was your blueprint? Because, you know, you like you got to really figure out the blueprint to the overseas kind of like how, how so things for go. Me, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm the leader. So a lot of times I would like, hit dudes up before we even get over there just to start that conversation or whatever like that. Cause I'm demanding, mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm real demanding, especially in like training camp and everything like that. I want everybody to work hard. My biggest pet peeve is selfish players. Let's yeah. move the ball. Let's make sure we get the open shot and everything like that. Play together as a team, whatever like that. Um, but my thing was just kind of like bringing everybody together in a sense. Um, Cause you got to think it's not just Americans. And so Italians, you're going to have some Serbians, maybe some Spanish players, some French players, like, and everybody has their different culture. Like Ser a Serbian and a Croatian, you got to know that history. They were all Yugoslav. They mm -hmm. went to war. They split up. You got you to gotta know that type of stuff. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like different, different type of personalities, different cultures. Mm -hmm. You may have a dude from the West Coast, may have a dude down South, East Coast. Mm -hmm. All these personalities got to fit. So I kind of, you know, did my job of trying to do that. You know, mm -hmm. and everything like that, because that's half the battle is everybody getting along. Got you. Now, did you um, did you like what was like the what was your thing as far as like did you go to like a like a new team every year? Like, what's like the longest? Not every year, not every year, but I mean, Europe is different. It's not like the NBA where it's like um, they give long term contracts. That that's they just not for Americans, so to speak. Yeah, they don't really do that all like that. So, you know, what I mean, it's you know, it was it was. I didn't mind that, to be honest with you, you know, because you're looking at something different. 
Yeah. Different city, different culture and everything like that. Can you see me? Yeah, All right. you're good. That's, that's, the lighting is much better, yeah. Okay. So, you know what I mean? It, you know what I mean? I, I kind of like moving around sometimes, to be honest with you. You know what yeah. I mean? A new experience and everything like that, new culture and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess th- thinking back on your, your 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 whole career, like what's what's something that you um some things that basketball has taught you taught you about yourself about life that you'll never forget. Um, is man, it's so many different people in the world, man. It's it's like so many different people, different cultures. Everybody got their own family issues, their own background, their own upbringing. You know, people been through a lot and everything. And basketball really brings everybody together, like on the team. Like you can leave all of that off, and you're my brother right now. For this season, this is all we got. Everybody's away from their family, unless you got wife and kids over there. But for the most part, you're away from your family, and like you really come together. Like I got lifelong friends, man, from basketball. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's certain places I don't go in the world <laughs> if it's not for basketball. No doubt. Like I probably don't go to Egypt and Morocco. Yeah, if it wasn't for basketball, no doubt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the flight was so cheap and it was right there. It yeah. took a couple hour flight. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it, it's a, it's, it's. I seen a lot too, man. Like it's, I seen some beautiful beaches in the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> some great art and architecture. Like it's, it's just a great world out there, and it's so much to see. Yeah, in a sense. No doubt. Um, are there any? Um, I hate to ask this question, but I'm always curious. And I hate that I hate to use the word regrets, but are there some things that you wish you could have done differently, like over the last 15, 20 years, like Many. Re- related Many. to basketball? I'm gonna tell you one. I should have. Um, or, or if you had like a, like a do over that you would do different. Yeah. So oh nine. Oh nine. So so oh seven oh eight season. I was in Italy. Had a great year, and then I went to Turkey. Didn't have a great year. In, didn't have a good year in Turkey. Instead of me, I should have stayed in Turkey with another team, but I was so stressed on, I want to go back to Italy. I want to go back to Italy. Forget that. I'm going back to Italy. I even took a pay cut to go back to Italy. Wow. And that was just a dumb decision. It was just a dumb decision. Yeah. Bottom line. There's <laughs> it, no way around it. I should have stayed in Turkey. It was a better environment. The peop- the team that I was going to go to, I knew the teammates there. It, I should have just did that. So that was one, that was that was definitely one right there. Yeah, yeah. Anything definitely. else like on the on the high school or college level? Or yeah, college level? yeah. Wish I would have won more games. Of course. <laughs> yeah. That's no that's doubt. always like. But I look at some high school college games now. I'm like, <laughs> like, what are you doing, man? Like, what are you doing? So, yeah, that yeah, definitely those. You always want to. What's it? Uh, if you Derek Jeter and Larry Bird, I remember Larry Bird had an interview and he was like, um, "Yeah, I won three championships, but you couldn't tell me I wasn't going to win five or six with our team and everything like that." <laughs> Derek Jeter said. Derek Jeter said the same thing. Like, you always remember the ones you lost. Like, no, yeah, I won these, but I should have won that one, that one, that one. No, I mean, just pick so, them apart. <laughs> yeah, man. Just a couple, couple, couple more shots could have been made. No a couple less turnovers. Yeah. Stuff like that, man. Um, I only have two more questions, then I'm going to open it up to the people for some Q&A. Um, okay. Of your entire career, high school, college, and professional, what do you think is your absolute best game that you just like was like, yo, I was the, I was the GOAT that night? Um, it was in Italy, 2007, 7-8 seven, season. That season, we played against Cap Orlando, just like Sicily. And... Um, Played against probably the the best point guard ever in Italian history, Pazeco. You guys, look him up. Look up Italy, two thousand Italy versus USA two thousand four Olympics. Mm-hmm. The point guard there demolished the U.S. Mm-hmm. So played against him and had a great game. I think I had like thirty some, twelve assists. Like it, it was it was crazy. <laughs> and so over there, I know like a lot of people don't understand is the evaluation. There's an eval. Or whatever. It's not a plus and minus like they got. It's an eval, and I had an eval like fifty something, and that's like unheard of at that time, and everything wow. like that. Wow. So it, yeah, that was probably my best. That was probably my best professional game. I would wow. say that. That's crazy. That's crazy. I appreciate you sharing that memory, man. Yep. Um, one of the last things I have, um, give some advice, man. It's um, I'm sure it's a lot of uh young high school players watching yeah. this. Maybe some college guys watching it, or mm-hmm. even when I put it on YouTube. 
Um, it's gonna be some young players watching it, man. So give them some advice, man. Some keys for success. So what I, what I, yeah, what I tell most people, young people, whatever, I'm like, you really gotta be honest with yourself. Like, when you look in the mirror, you know if your left hand is weak. You know if your defense is not as good as it needs to be, or whatever. And the main thing, you have to sacrifice something. Something has to sacrifice. If you do everything your friends do, you're not going to succeed. Mm -hmm. If y'all play video games for two, three hours, or whatever like that every day, cut yours for an hour and do some work, do some reading, stretch, whatever, do some push-ups or sit-ups. Like, you got to sacrifice something or whatever. And that's, that's a personal thing. You got to figure that out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's that alone time where you're like, all right, I know I do this too much. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Let me sacrifice that a little bit or yep. whatever. You know what I mean? Like, you just got to be honest with yourself. Like I said, the reason I picked St. Bonaventure, I was honest with myself. I know I can't stay home. I know I can't go to UNC Greensboro where they got A&T down the street <laughs> and Bennett College down there. That's not going to work for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to lie to myself like, yo, I'll be all right. I'm just going to have some fun. It's, it's a uh -huh. lie. Uh -huh. It's a lie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's the main thing. Appreciate that, man. All right. Well, hey, um, I just want to say I'm so thankful, man. I've, I've looked forward to this day to be able to sit down with you and to talk about your history. I've looked forward to this, like, my entire life, man. Like, since, man, you know, I since, appreciate it, man. Appreciate yeah, it, bro. Since, you know, since, since I do, I mean, you, you my bro, and, and, and we, 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 that's like I said, we, we slept on the same couches and I was around, but still to hear your perspective on your life is priceless and so valuable to me because your mind is so interesting and unique. You're so intelligent. You experience so many things. So I, I, I've longed for this day to, to hear your experience. And um, just want to say, I, you know, and, and knowing how, um, how you are about time, not wasting time, um, how valuable time is to you. I just want to thank you for giving me your time and mm -hmm. our viewance. No, our, this was our, key. This was to, key. To, yeah, our, our audience, you know, just allowing the people to, to hear your story, man. Um, I can't thank you enough. God bless you. God bless the family. Continue to pray for you, man. And um, that's that's pretty much that, man. Any 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 last minute things you want to say or any shout outs uh, before we get to the Q and A? Nah, what I was gonna say though, like we when you give me the compliment of intelligence, man, trust me, that is all my dad and my grandfather. No doubt. Like that's the groundwork that was laid on me. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like they didn't play sports like yeah. that, but it was more of like getting up in the morning taking care of this, taking care of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everything like, that. like it, that was, it was easy for me to get up in the morning. Cause I remember hearing that door leave at five thirty six in the morning, getting ready to go to work and everything like that. They up before everybody making sure <laughs> everything is cool and everything like that. That's, that's right. <laughs> Those old school values. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. That's so that's why I be that, like, that's why I be on. Like, I remember my dad, I told my dad one time, Hey, can you wake me up in the morning when you go to work this and that so I can work out? Like, nah. <laughs> If you really want to work out, you're going to get up. That's right. You know what I mean? So you mean to tell me, me I got to wake no you crutch? up? For, like, I got to wake you up for something that you say you love? Yeah. So all of a sudden, now he's going to be your excuse. He, he ain't wake you up. He went to work. Now you get up all late. Like, Dad, you ain't wake me up. Now that's your excuse. Yeah. You already <laughs> creating excuses. Already creating excuses. Already. Oh, already. man. Hey, well, um, without further, but now if anybody got ado, if anybody got any questions, yeah, I'm I'm here. That's right. Never... Without further ado, man, people, it's up to you guys. Um, ask my man Mark Green some questions. Any questions y'all have, drop them in the comment section, and we're gonna answer them right now. Um, I'm gonna go back. I wrote down a few. Um, uh, somebody, uh -huh. somebody asked, what's the best and worst thing about playing overseas? Yep. Um, the atmosphere is just on a whole nother level over there. Like, remember Rashid Broken Bro said yesterday, like people throwing stuff um like it's man it, that atmosphere is crazy man like it's it's crazy like like doing what, like, fires in the, like, like doing fires in the stands what man it's crazy what it's crazy like i played i played one game they was throwing toilet paper toilet paper like wet toilet paper like when dudes are shooting free throws you know what i mean it, it's crazy look listen you know what's crazy when i'm there what like in it it don't even phase yeah. me. I'm I'm just like, all right, you know, just get it up. I'm just looking like that's stupid. But now I'm thinking about it, I'm like, that's crazy, man. That's but you, crazy. You, you you actually saw someone set a fire in the stands? No, no, no. You can you can YouTube this. This is this is this is easy to YouTube. Greece, yeah. Um my homie, he just put up. You can YouTube Greece, Pantanakas, Olympiacos, rivalry. You, you it's it's normal. It's nothing. <laughs> it's, it's 
Nothing. <laughs> nothing. It's nothing. Like that's that's the, that's the norm. It's oh, not. Sorry. It's, 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 it's normal. It's normal. <laughs> like the drums. Yeah, I just put the drums and everything like that. Like they they do drums the whole game. Like just beating, chanting, singing. <laughs> Both fans are singing the whole game. Oh my gosh. Yo, insane. Yo, that's ridiculous, man. Somebody, uh, Yaz asked, was it hard to leave your family? And, and, who, and who is, who, who's Yaz? Who's Yaz? Yaz, my niece. Okay. Oh, no, no, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah, okay, she was yeah. like, is it hard to leave? Was it hard to leave my family? Yeah, man. Like, it, that was tough. Because I had Lyric and Simone. She was pregnant with um, Nye mm -hmm. my first year over or whatever. So I missed the birth. Wasn't the team fault. I flew home for like a couple weeks. It just we just missed. Yeah, that was tough, man. Yeah. So I was like, yo, y'all gotta come over here. Like yeah. I'm not gonna make it. I'm, I'm sure that was it. big for them to come here for your first yeah. three games. Mm-hmm. Um, my man Naya McLeod wants to know, um, do you agree with Sports Center top ten NBA list? I didn't even see it. Okay. I didn't even, I didn't even see it. Is that, I'm not sure if it's like something recent or something new. Um yeah. Do you feel you made enough money overseas to have you set for the rest of your life? Um, I, guess, or I guess not. Not you personally. How is the money put the potential? Well, for money it, overseas? it, it, it like, depends. Like, can you be comfortable overseas? Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. For sure, you'd be comfortable. Yeah, I mean, but you, I mean, if you want to live a certain lifestyle, you don't have to work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You don't have to keep working. But but every, something. But everybody who go overseas, are you getting paid, or are you gotta like? No, it's levels, man. It's levels. Yeah. Everybody's not. Everybody's not getting it like that. Mm -hmm. and especially right now, the market is is really low. It's been it's been low like the last few years, actually. Oh yeah, it's not the thing. Because this is the other part I want to bring up. When I first was going overseas, everybody didn't want to go overseas. Yeah, that wasn't the move. Uh huh. Everybody was like G League. I mean the D League, NBA. Everybody wasn't going overseas. Didn't nobody want to do that. Mm -hmm. Now everybody wants to go overseas. Mm -hmm. you know why? I mean? Why? 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 What's the draw now? You think? Social media. Gotcha. It looked good. It looked uh, good to say I'm I'm overseas and everything like that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. Well, it what, what, good party and everything like is, that. What do you think are some of the biggest rude awakenings that some people may get when they get there, as far as adjustments? That that people uh -huh. that think is sweet, you know what I mean? The culture, mm -hmm. the culture, the culture is. I mean, you you got to be able to adapt. You got to be able to adapt. Are you cool with just chilling? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's slow pace over there. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's a different, different mentality and everything. Yeah. G. Broken Bro said, "What's my what's the, my favorite country? Italy, Italy for sure. Italy for sure. Yeah, Italy for sure." Um, uh, Lair also wants to know, uh, was the tra well, you, you talked about this already, but just touch on it real quick in case it wasn't um tuned in. Was the transition between college to the pros hard to adjust to? Um, yeah, yep, yeah, because um in college I was just I could just go. Yeah. And even my first year, that coach just had me just going. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, kind of do what you want and everything like that. But then my second year, I had probably my best coach professionally who broke the game down. We had yeah. a lot of video sessions, hour-long video sessions. And I had a I had a vet my second year, Deron Hayes, who showed me how to not work as much during the season. Yeah. Work smarter. Gotcha. Like, he got me in the sauna. We was in the, he got me getting in the jacuzzi, lifting weights after practice. Uh-huh getting my shots up because he had a family. His son is Killian Hayes, going to be a top 10 pick this year. Gotcha. And he just he just really went what time I need to eat, my lunch. You know what I mean? Like all, all those things yeah. is big. Like gotcha. that was big. Because in college, they control your whole they control your whole day. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Everything is scheduled. Yeah. But over, over there, it's like, all right, we got practice this time. Mm -hmm. And that's that. Yeah. That's the day. It's on you. Yeah. Nobody telling you what time you need to wake up. Nobody telling you what time you need to eat, what you need to eat, this is that, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, that was. Yaz wanted to know what made you retire. Emotionally and mentally, just drain. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, it's just, just dead. Mm -hmm. Like when you, yeah, I just ain't, I just ain't have no more. You know what I mean? Like when I was, uh, I realized when I was going to practice, just getting to practice, and not getting there early. All right, then yeah, it's time to, it's time to shut it down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gotcha. Shut it down. Um, somebody wants to know in high school, did you play against Maurice Bryant from Coatesville? Yes, sir. <laughs> Every year, just about. No doubt. Um, oh, wow, that's an awesome question. Two things you tell your 15-year-old self now. 15. Two? Nah, there's a whole bunch I got to tell him. <laughs> so 15, what, what was I at in 15? What, what grade is that? Ninth, 10th grade? Ninth, yeah, ninth, ninth, 10th grade. 
what do I tell myself? That's a really good question. Um, get some more sleep and stretch. Gotcha. Stretch and get more sleep. Gotcha. Like that's imperative. Yeah. Travis Best gave me that tip. Uh-huh. He's like, hey, when you sitting around watching TV, this is a tip for you young guys, sitting around watching TV, whatever, just stretch. Uh-huh. Before you go to bed, stretch. In the morning when you get up, stretch. It's good for you. Gotcha. So 15 year old self, stretch, stretch. and sleep. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> um, Naeem McLeod says, uh, so they say overseas um, teams or players only practice two hours max. Is it true they say uh, it's the coach's fault that the players aren't in shape? It depends the coach. Um, okay. A lot of Europeans, they don't do nothing over the summer. Oh, like, like they vacation. They vacation. Oh, oh so they, they don't. Vacation. Oh, wow. They gotcha. vacation like that. Yeah. So, you, you, yeah, most of them, they don't, they, you know. But it, de- it depends what coach you got. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, thank God I never had no crazy coach that ran us all crazy. Like, I never, I never had that. Yeah, so yeah. That was good. And when you, well, like, what, what, what was your, um, what was your off season like? Like, when, when you were done a season, when you came back home, so what I would do, um, I would take like one or two weeks off, and then I get into boxing. I was big on boxing. Oh, didn't know that. Yeah, I was big on boxing. I would do boxing like twice a week, still mm-hmm. lift, do my abs and everything. I didn't touch a basketball. I used to always do. I didn't touch a basketball to, um, after July fourth. Okay. But I so was staying in some type of shape with the boxing and everything like that. Uh huh. So was it was it um like almost was it written out like a schedule like for two weeks I'm gonna chill then I'm gonna do my boxing. I'm going I'm, I'm to not touch the ball, or, or it just happened like that? No, nah, I mean, that, that was like, that was my routine. Gotcha. That was just kind of like my routine, just to give myself a, a break, because I was coming home like mid-June all the time uh-huh. and everything like that, just to, you know, just to kind of decompress in a sense. Gotcha. Um, do you want to coach? Could you see yourself uh, coaching either high school or college basketball? Well, I'm 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 helping right now, uh, coaching high school, Norristown and the Hill School and everything like that. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like I yeah. said, this year, I'm like a sponge year. You know what I mean? I'm not saying no to anything and open to everything. Gotcha. So we'll see. Gotcha. Um, Yaz also wants to know, um, how do you coach your son without being, uh, without doing too much to push him away from the game? And mind you, we only got two minutes, so this is probably your last question. All right. I'm still working on that. Yeah. <laughs> still working on that. Trying to find I, balance. Yeah, because I, I get it. I'm telling him, take the trash out. Do your schoolwork. This is net. Yeah. He ain't trying to hear basketball, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to, neither. No doubt. <laughs> hey, well, that's pretty much it, man. Those are all the questions. No more Q&A. Um, I love you, man, and I thank you for this you time. you, too, bro. This interview is going up on YouTube. And, yo, I got – guess who I got tomorrow? I got Jared Kears tomorrow, man. Nice. The real OG. The Great real dude. OG. We got, we, got, we got Jared Kears tomorrow. And, listen, next – this coming Monday – it's going to be like the grand finale, dog. It's going to be crazy Monday. Behind Man. the scenes, I'll tell you who I got. It's going to be crazy. But tomorrow, right, cool. I, got, I, got, I got Jared Kears tomorrow. That's going to be a fun one as well. Hey, if anybody else has any questions, y'all can just um, DM me, inbox, whatever like that. Feel free. No doubt. We got DJ Belly in here. What up, Belly? <laughs> All right, man. All right, man. Appreciate you, you, man. You love already you too. know. All right, man. All right. Yep.